You are listening to a Chatter Fact. Again, these are not interviews, they're conversations. And Nicole Garza, I say, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not going to do that thing where like I talk and, oh, and this guest that I'm going to have on. And then you have to like <laughs> awkwardly look at me. But anyway, but, well, wait, no, let me talk about you while you okay. awkwardly look at me. All right. I'll try to do model poses while you look at me. Like, Zoolander. I'm showing you my bum yep, right now. Yep, I, mm-hmm. It wasn't my bare bum. I just stuck it up in lies, the air because lies. I know her that it was, way. It was no, all bare lies. Bum. <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing. Oh, shoot. Anybody that wants to, like, right now, singers, professional wannabes, like, do you guys want to sing for a living? Do you want to get your stuff right, like, from the business sense? This girl from like age 16 was doing her own marketing. She was doing her own songwriting. You knew how to like sing like a 16 year old should sing because you had a little bit of the like, I'm gonna do the pop thing. <laughs> I but, did. But yes. your choices were like so just intelligent and they were so mature for your age, which like popped out to me. Huh. Since, so, if people, you're gonna hear the story about somebody who knows how to sing from the gut technically knows how to sing, knows how to market herself, understands the business and knows how to do this for a living because this is a girl who at 16 like went after it and now she's a full-time singer from both ends of the of the microphone. Like she can do the business end as well as the performance end. This is how you do it. Like I'm talking to somebody who knows how to do it. So if you want to know how to do it, sit back, put some stuff in your coffee like I just did and <laughs> sit and listen to me talk to Nicole Garza so hi hi I love you so much I love you you're I've told you this before but now I can share it with like the podcast world that you're one of my like in my top 10 singers you're like one of my favorite singers I tell you this a lot I know and I hope it never gets old though I'm good. it doesn't <laughs> say, keep it say coming it again. <laughs> say it again but slower slower but slower <laughs> it's true man like I, I I liked you when I first met you so uh, here's what here's here's how Nicole and I go back. It was you weren't 16 at the time. I don't know how old were you. I was probably 19 or 20. Okay. I'd say so. I heard the CD though, and you were were you 16 in the CD that I heard, I, or were you a little bit older by that? Time? I was recording it from age 18. Was that 18? Okay. So like and 19. So I, I think I released it when I was 19. I just I I felt you know good about what I knew, and I worked with these seasoned musicians, and I got I was lucky enough to work with like truly seasoned former chess records people and people that I thought brought me to this point where I knew what I was doing and I looked around and I didn't see that many people who knew what they were doing like everybody was just kind of painting by the numbers sure. and then I heard your CD I did uh, my, my when I did my CD release party I had I happened to have a local following in the Chicagoland area and a lot in northwest Indiana but anyway I thought well I'm gonna pack this room. I think it's gonna be okay. From my when I did my solo release, I want people who should be in front of a crowded room. So and I started reaching out to all my friends, just saying, "Tell me who should be in front of a crowded room. I want to showcase original artists who can afford to, who should be showcased." And it was a journalist. It was Tom Lounges. Okay. Man, I, I can't. Yeah, I had to think about Tom Lounges. That name. guy. Tom Lounges said you have to listen. He called you Nikki G. Uh huh. I'm like, all right, Nikki G. I called me Nikki G. <laughs> Anybody else yeah. that calls me that is, you know, getting shanked from here yeah, on forward. But, but back then you were. Yes. Oh, I was deep in. See that? Oh, yeah. yeah like mm-hmm. Pop star. Because I was like, I need a stage name. Like Pink has Pink. You know what's <laughs> mine? <laughs> When did you when did you switch it like cuz now I know Nicole Garza which is cool because Nicole Garza is still like pops off like an, an artist you know like that yeah, can be a 20 year old or that can be an older person Back then I thought Nicole Garza was super you know, boring, not creative at all. So I was literally going through a list of names like, maybe I should be Sparkle. <laughs> My mom's like, no, you cannot be Sparkle. <laughs> I'm not even was kidding. Was Sparkle an option? It was an option. Oh, In hell my yeah. head, it was an uh, option. Yeah. I wish I could have met Sparkle. Right? And I, you know, I did this Latin pop sort of thing with an R&B yeah, man. feel. And did you write all those songs? Were those yours? I wrote all but two. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. The other two I was asked to sing for other songwriters and yeah. I liked them so I put them on the album oh my God. but yeah I wrote them um, and I, I was the primary writer um, of the lyrics and the melodies and then the music was written by this producer out of Chicago named Chris G yeah he worked at Studio Chicago which I believe is gone now how did you how did you meet him well when I was applying to go to Columbia College uh-huh. And I was looking at different programs and stuff, and I was looking at the recording program. And on the flyer, it said that all the students recorded Columbia Co- from Columbia 
record at Studio Chicago. Okay. So I decided, you know, this is long story short, but I decided not to go to college the first year because I thought I was going to be the next American Idol. Of course. So when I didn't make American Idol, I was like, shit. (laughs) (laughs) I now have a year to, I need to do something, you know? Um, It's too late to go to school. I wasn't really feeling the school thing. And my mom wasn't very happy about that, but I still did not do the school thing for a year. And so my dad reminded me, well, you know, let's check out Studio Chicago. So we went there and we met the engineer and kind of told him what my goals were. And then he introduced me to the house producer, who was Chris G. And we clicked so well, it was ridiculous. Did you have like a demo to show him when you went there? I did. I had a three song cover demo that I did when I was... 16 or 17 okay and it had three songs on it it was i'm like a bird yes nelly Furtado. because you are <laughs> well duh <laughs> um this song by dido a breathless okay go on go on yeah yeah that, that ridiculous song um <laughs> And then I turned to you, Christina Aguilera. And I don't know if you remember me back then. I thought I was like the next Christina Aguilera. Back then, that was a good role model. Oh, for sure. To, as far as getting your chops up. Though. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those were the three tunes. And I was like, but I need to sing original stuff. And I was doing showcases and yeah. going to all these talent you know, seminars and whatnot with the three, do- three song demo. But... I needed my own stuff. Which still, a lot of people at your age didn't know to do that. Like some did, but not enough. I wanted it. You know? Yeah, I yeah. still, you know, I still want you still it, but want I was, it, yeah. you know, just young and hungry and like had all the time in the world. Oh, you know, those young hungry days. Yes, but I mean, I'm still hungry all the time, but for food, <laughs> that's mostly. why I brought you cookies and cashews, <laughs> man. No, but that I like think that's huge because, and then having the eventual. Like even the parent support helps a lot. Oh yeah, like, you know even if they're they're kind of in, but then they're not in, but they're still in. Oh you know? yeah, no, my parents, they funded the whole first album. They funded all of my crazy trips to East Coast, West Coast, Vegas. You they know wherever I was thrilled. going. Like, yeah. Now you're doing it. Right. You're full time. It's sure. music. But I, I went. I, I did the opposite because then you went back in, which I can't wait to. T- you guys have to hear. I've been hearing how she's legendary at Columbia College in Chicago, which. A lot of people know about this school, especially if you want to be a performer and stuff. But you've like changed the landscape of that place, so I can't wait to tell you what I found out about that. And cool. Oh, this is awesome. But yeah, the parent thing, because I I worked in reverse of what you did. I was in school first. I was uh, I was an English major, and then I switched to. Radio. I did not know that. Yeah, that's what I I didn't even study music. I studied English. Interesting. But I sang in the jazz ensemble, which first semester was a jazz ensemble. And I thought, go oh, cool. I've never. I wasn't even in a choir in, in high school. This is great. And then second semester, they slapped a gold vest on me, and I was a show choir. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what this just isn't jazz? <laughs> I got the music in me, and there were jazz hands. Yeah. My hands. Those were, are jazz. Your hands. My were hands jazzy. were the only thing that were jazzy. Yeah. In the second semester, but there were a lot of girls, and I met a lot of girls. I met a lot of girls too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not as excited yeah. about it as you are. No, because but... like <laughs> did some of them totally let me kiss them. It was. Oh yeah, my I goodness. I know. Yeah. So I got to bases and stuff. Choir girls. Choir girls. I, I guess know. so. They're kind of like they're kind of naughty. Yeah. And they could sort of tell like. Wait, he's not a. Oh, he's a band guy. He like right. sings in bars. Right. So suddenly, just because I was singing in bars, I was the bad boy. Yeah, it's so weird because yeah. I was part of both worlds. You were, which that's why you're so dangerous. That's the perfect mixture to me. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So I got you know the whole choir, good girls gone bad sort of experience, <laughs> and then I had the whole cheerleader dancer mean girls experience. You oh know? my god! So I had. Um, really strange groups of friends you're but. so balanced though man because you're so you're so good at what you do but you're you're gracious but, but see that's why i want to talk about like the that year of college thing because what i did was i i i was an english major and then i switched to radio tv because i had this stint where i was on chicago radio and i thought oh shit i better learn about radio um but then my last year of college i got to junior year and then i was working with a bunch of producers and came really close about four or five times within this year span so i was living at crc oh okay on somebody else's dime which was great and hinge hinge studios which now they just moved to la did you know that i did not yeah but anyway i had to do the i can't i have to do one or the other i can't work a job to, to pay my rent 
finish school for the radio TV thing, which I don't think I'm going to get into, and then do this. I'm going to be a star. I can't. Yeah. Uh-huh. How can I do this if I'm going to be a star? You know, That's, and I remember, that was me. But you did the same thing, but just you took the year before. Before, yeah. Between yeah. my mom's biggest fear was number one, I was a straight A student. Okay, I could have gone to any college I wanted to go to, I and it. so she supported the fact that I wanted to go into music 100. percent But then it scared her when I decided, ah, oh, you know, I got a, I got a scholarship, oh, God. and I was like, I'm just not going to take the scholarship this year. I'm sure they'll give it to me <sighs> next year. You know, I'm going to do my thing. And what scared her is that I wouldn't go back. She's like, you're never going to go back. You know, once you have the freedom, you've been going to school, you know, yeah. through high school, you know, for 13 years of your life, God. you're not going to go back after you take a year off. So then so what that was her fear. It? Like what made you, you know, I love education. Okay. I love the social aspect. I love the learning aspect. I miss it. Really? There's every day I probably think about maybe going back to get my master's or, no kidding. or something. I just don't have the time you and so I just paid off my school loan. So it's like, why would I want to do that to myself again? <laughs> you know? So, but then did you before, like before you jumped into the music thing, were you already thinking like a Columbia college or were you, I, I always knew I wanted to be a singer. Okay. Literally since probably the age of four or five. Screw that. Then you know what? Let's, let's back it up. Yeah. Okay. okay so what, what, what happened? Like, what made you, what gave you the singing The bug? earliest memories I have of singing were in my grandparents' garage okay. for my family parties. And my parents bought me my first karaoke machine. It was literally like eight inches wide and about 12 inches high. And it played cassettes <laughs> yes. and it had like a foam, you know, topped oh, microphone. microphone. <laughs> and I was fo- probably four or five years old. Oh my God. And I would go in there, and my dad would only let me sing the divas. So it would had to had to be, you know, Mariah, Whitney, Celine, Bette Midler. Your dad would have like at four. He would just he would be well, selective that was about probably, your material. To my memory, probably six or seven. Okay, but he was selective about your show. Yeah. All right. So anytime I would I would be like I want to sing Paula Abdul or I want to do this, and he's like, No, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> Oh my God! So your yeah. first like ground, the the ground level of your voice, where it was people who could actually sing, it right? Was, wow. Oh yeah. Okay. So if I sang the you know the popular '90s sort of stuff, yeah, it was because I wanted to, and it was behind, you know, the closed doors in my bathtub or something. Um, but it wasn't to rehearse and it wasn't to perform. What a kick ass unintentional, well intentional. What a kick ass boot camp though. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Wow. Yeah, and I you know. From that point on, I enjoyed the challenge. I enjoyed, okay, this song is a little higher than the last song I sang, so I'm going to you know, sing it a million times till I get it right. And the very first solo performance I had in front of an actual audience was when I was in second grade. Mm-hmm. And I got asked to sing for Earth Day at Washington Elementary in Chicago. <sighs> and I sang Heal the World by Michael nice. Jackson. Yeah. And the kindergartners sang back up for me. <laughs> <laughs> really? They had this the, you know, arm wave thing and they're singing, heal the world. The chorus is with me. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know? <laughs> and it's funny because one of my mom's friends just sent me that video a, a few months back uh, on my Facebook. It was from a camcorder. So she was like taking it from her TV onto her iPhone. So it's a really crappy quality, but it was just really funny to see. Uh, yeah, so that was my first like, full-on audience performance and I wasn't as comfortable in front of an audience as I am now obviously so what, it has uh, yeah come from what, somewhere. what does your first so when show you see, look like when you see me singing it's if you were to listen to me singing you would think oh she's 100% confident she knows what she's doing she sounds great if you were to see me I was like slowly swaying back and forth <laughs> right. you could see me twirling the, the mic cable in my finger and like looking back and forth like a mummy you know like a puppet and so it's it was just really, really awkward when did it to watch click me. Then, because uh, yeah, my my first show, I was all arms. Because <laughs> people see me now and they see that I'm gonna jump yeah. around. My legs couldn't move. Oh, that's funny. I couldn't. My legs went nowhere. That's so I was really just funny. Like, well, my arms are swinging. When did when did when did the performance aspect kind of kick in for you? I think it sl- it wasn't like all of a sudden one day I had it. Because you're a good it, dancer. It slowly happened over time. I remember that was second grade. The whole heal the world thing. Sure. Third grade, I did oh the talent God. show and I sang "Rhythm Is Gonna Get Ya," Gloria Stefan, and. Oh. All of my girlfriends at the time, 
dance back up with me. So <laughs> for me. So we you all got together. At the third yeah. grade, you had like your oh, backup dancers. Oh, a full dancers. posse. Right. Yeah. And we were so mature, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So we would go to my friend Letitia's house in her basement and I'm friends with her on Facebook. So I'll have to share this video with her since I name dropped her. (laughs) Um, And we, at the time I was still going to school in Chicago. And so we made up all this full like choreography with staging and blocking and in third grade, (laughs) it's like, that's blowing my mind. I didn't know you were trying these things this early. At third grade, I was still like picking my nose thinking, I don't know, maybe I'll be a football player or a fire truck. Oh, geez. No, that was third grade, and it was a full-on talent show. And I don't know if you know this, but Washington Elementary goes through eighth grade. So it was kindergarten through eighth grade talent show, and okay. I won. Whoa, all right. Oh, I'm high-fiving her right now. Come on. <laughs> How funny is that? No, that's you know, ass, I man. won in third grade. And then yeah. fourth grade, you know, the summer of third grade, I moved to Cherville, Indiana. So, you know, fourth grade was a whole whole new story. I was a new girl, and I was the girl in choir that can sing, but everybody hated because I haven't been around. God. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I got the Christmas solo. For, in the Christmas play, I got the solo. Now, is that is that a big deal? Does that make people angry? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's this like is a weird culture. A huge deal. The choir culture. The choir culture. Yeah, man. It's a huge deal, and I'm the new girl, you mm-hmm. know, choir choir solo was probably given out in November. I had only been in school for two months. Okay. These people barely knew me, but the choir director loved me, you know, and I got the Christmas solo and it was Oh Holy Night. Well, so this is where the diva started, right? We had just moved there. My dad and I and my mom went to Rubino's Music in Merrillville to Uh buy my own sound system because I wanted to perform and I wanted to to practice on a real mic and real sound system. So we went Which is to, already kind of a young diva demand. Yeah, yeah. right? Mommy, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to That's, know what I had know. that accent too when I was young. It's so weird. Because <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, well, here, use this. Here's a cucumber, you know? Or, no, you know, we went to Rubino's music. pretend microphone, go. Yeah, we shopped around. We went to Shit. Broadway music. We went to, you know, Rubino's music. And Jim Rubino just loved me. Oh, okay. So... We were testing out all these different systems, and then he told me in front of my parents, if you sing a song, you know, for the store, we'll take money off. Wow. So I'm like, well, bring it on. Yeah. So I can't remember what I sang for the store. I, <laughs> I want to say it was Wind Beneath My Wings, <laughs> Bette Midler. I think it was. I can't remember. I'd have to ask my mom. But I can't remember how much money they took off, but it was a good chunk of change they took off, but and then we bought the system. St- so right off the bat, you were, you were winning like, you know, singing was giving back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Find me from getting the solos. Uh-huh. The choir thing is... So you did you do the choir thing throughout school and even in high school? Were you in... I was always okay. in choir. Because yeah. I gave voice always. lessons at your high school because I'm older yeah, than you. that's so funny. And, but so you were in... Your high school had like a million choirs. Oh, yeah. You guys had a lot of talent Ooh, out I have there. some stories about that, yeah. too. Because what was, Were what, you in what, the, what, counterpoints? Or they, they had a lot. It was Lake Central... They had a bunch. We need to go up the food chain. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the whole sound system thing. Sure. That was purchased. New girl, fourth grade, got the Christmas solo. I refused to <laughs> sing my solo on the school system because it sounded like crap. So, my dad, when it was time for my solo, yeah. rolled out my, <laughs> oh my, my professional PV Diva! protege. <laughs> With my own mic oh my and ran sound for me. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And rolled it back. Now it sounded so much better than the school system. And but because so wait, wait, wait. of they're that, they're hearing this like, and then you show up and ah, and you're singing better than everybody right, else. A, a but then on this system. like professional system, right. and then you roll away like you can't have it. No, you can't have only no, it's just only, me. only Nikki G voice yeah, it's just comes me. to the. <laughs> That's awesome. But because of that, yes, because of that, I got told by every, all my students and even parents thought I was lip syncing. Oh, really? So the hatred just grew because of that. Are you serious? Oh, I'm serious. I was bullied on the playground. That's I was ridiculous. bullied in choir and wow. they, yeah, because I was lip syncing and that's why I had to use my own system is because I couldn't really sing like that. Now, that's a compliment because it was actually me singing. Yeah, but the but jealousy. It was in, as a nine, nine-year-old fourth grader, wow. it was hardcore. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah. when, when, when did like formal training start as far as like music reading and things like that? I, I started taking voice lessons in probably sixth grade. Okay. Yes. Sixth grade because, um, 
I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Did that take you to, was it, was that purely technique or is that when you learned, started to learn how to read music as well? It was purely technique. Okay. Um, and he kept trying to change the way I sounded though, the teacher. So my mom asked Miss Andra, our choir, my choir director at the time, Hey, you know, we put her in voice lessons. How do you feel about it? And she told me, Nicole's got her own unique sound. You know, she's doing well in my class. She, she's the floater. She could sing soprano, mezzo-soprano, or alto. Uh-huh. I think she's getting enough training here. You don't want somebody to be changing the way she sounds because she has her own thing. So they took me out of voice lessons. So that was probably maybe a month I was in those lessons. No. And I didn't have formal training again until college. Okay. Yep. So then, And then you get to the high school level, and it's kind of... So I... I <laughs> I'm very bipolar when it comes to which performing art I want to do. Uh huh. So I was a dancer all through middle school, and I was able to dance and be in choir and show choirs and stuff in middle school. Okay, they had a strong theater there too, Lake Central. Yeah, Did you for do sure. That stuff too, or not? Um, not not while I was in school, no. Um, yeah. So, but you know, in high school they make you choose. So in middle school I was doing choir, I was doing theater, I was doing dance, and it was all fine and dandy, you know, and yeah. I was able to do outside stuff, you know, Circle the State and, you know, Isma and all those, you know, choir sort of competition sort of things. Yeah. And, but then I got to high school and I thought I was going to be able to do the same thing. And they're like, nah, you got to choose. So yes, you can do, you know, your ninth period is choir, okay. but you can't do the outside extracurricular choir stuff if you are a dancer. Well, I had been wow. in Central Let's since probably May or June, going into freshman year, which is the dance team. And so I had already committed to that year, so I couldn't try out for, you know, the, the oh, show choirs man. and stuff like so that. So your voice had to be stifled for so a I can year. Get, so I can get, you know, the choir solos, you know, the lines here and there, but I couldn't uh-huh. actually be in the specialty choirs. Oh, wow. So the whole first year I did Centralettes and then just, you know, ninth period choir. Hmm. And then sophomore year, I, you know, we won nationals for the dance team. My freshman year, I got put on varsity, um, and we won nationals. So when you weren't like kicking ass as a singer, your dancing was. It was up there, you know. I wasn't the best. Don't get me wrong, but you know, I was part of a really good organization, and yeah, it was boot camp. I mean, it's taught me a lot of life skills. Is the dance team? Is that where your gymnastics? Yeah. Gymnastics didn't come till I was like 16 or 17. Okay. Cause, oh, she was also teaching gymnastics folks yeah. for a while. So, yeah. So I did, you know, I did the dance thing freshman and sophomore year. And then I got into um, cheerleading, which got me into gymnastics my junior year. And then finally, senior year is when I did the counterpoint, you know, high end yeah. show choir. But I hadn't done any of them until senior year. I, I only want to like talk about it because it doesn't deserve much time, but the, the culture of the choirs are so weird because I didn't do choir in high school because my dad started, he jumped back into singing when I was in high school and that was like four or five part harmony. So I was kind of homeschooled in right. a way. Um, but when I was in college and I joined that, you know, first, it, again, first it was like a jazz ensemble, but it was a, it was a lot of former singers from like the Lake Central okay. camp, you know? But I remember walking in there, and I'd already been singing in bars and singing for yeah. a while, but I wanted to be part of a, a group. I wanted that big mass. I wanted to be a backup person doing yeah. harmonies that I don't yeah. usually experience. You sure. Know? But then they had, you know, whatever, the Kirby Shaw. I think we might have talked about this. The Kirby Shaw uh-huh. Bridge Over Trouble Water. Oh. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, ah, this sounds like something I can do, though. So I'm going to go out for it. This is fun. I went out for the whatever. There was like seven of us. Who went out for the the solo, and I was new guy, and I got it, and that was it, man. Then it began. Then that weird show choir thing happened, where like some guy comes up to me and he says, you know, my my father, who I haven't seen in a year, is coming to the concert, and you know, it would sure mean a lot if you gave up the solo and gave it to me, <laughs> because he's gonna be like, what is this real? And I knew nothing about this world, you know. And oh, the, it's and weird. They, 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 you know, one of the, the the assistant director came up to me and he said, "Don't, don't listen to anything that anybody says. If you give away this solo, I will, I will kick your ass." Yeah. Like, why? What are they? Okay, it's like a weird soap opera. Did I ever opera. tell you oh. about 
the Bridge Over Troubled Water experience for me? No, I'm not sure. Okay, so the high schoolers would come to the elementary school and perform for us, and it was like Big Bopper, um, oh, okay. Duke of Earl, yeah. and Bridge Over Troubled Water. <sighs> and your friend, I can't remember her name. I can't remember her name. All right, but let's she see. Sang, Katie, uh, Tiffany Pappas. Tif- Tiffany Pappas. Oh, yeah. Was the singer at the time, um, and I was in fourth or fifth grade, and they came and sang to us and let us know about, you know, the programs in high school and, you know, keep keep it up and you can do this sort of thing. Wow. And it was just the most beautiful song I had ever heard and was the most beautiful performance I had ever heard. From that point forward, I was like, I, I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that, that girl. Yeah. By the time I got there, they weren't doing that anymore. <laughs> oh, we did... We did talk about this. Yes. Right. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, Nicole and I are connected in so many weird ways. That's right. Because the director of that school who brought it to your grade school told me later on that he came to my college concert and heard the song and he liked what I did in it. He's like, I heard you do that lead. And I thought, I have to bring this to my school. And he brought it to his school and he came up to me and shook my hand just to say that when, when he heard my lead, it made him like it even more or something. Yeah. And then he took it, and then he took it to your school. Yeah. So we had this weird trickle yeah. thing, trickle down And then thing. I did it in my senior recital for college. Oh, my when God. When you were there, and you were and there. And I went to see it, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. How weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. But that was one of those songs for me that was like, oh. Yeah. You know, I need to do this. I need to, for the, a, not just sing the song, but just sing. Your because music nice. is so powerful. Yeah. That it's like... And when it can make you feel like it made me feel that day, there was just no doubt on whether or not I was going to do it. So here's what then I want to like move into the other, you know, whatever non-tangible area of singing. When when I when I heard you for the first time, I just heard the CD, and again I could tell you were doing the thing. I did it too. Where like I got to do this. This is the vein mm-hmm. I have to stand. But you you had this perfect balance of I'm gonna sing like a pop star. But then my Britney Spears. <laughs> but there would be this kind of like meat to it, and it was it was just your choices. The choices were so mature. Like it sound you know, and to know that it was a lot of you, maybe with the help of the one producer. But it sounded you were doing things that like at that time a singer in the pop world would need like five different musical arrangers and producers sure. pointing them in the right direction. And I could tell, you could just tell by delivery that that was you. But then meeting you even at the beginning after hearing that and then working with you, you know, you were gracious enough to sing backups on my my, my part of the show at the release party after you did your set. And meeting you, it's just like you, you like got it. You got how to sing. You you technically had your shit down. You were you sing like a pro. You're a pro, but then you sing from the gut. Like you know how to how to sprinkle in emotional content. You know, I hate when I hear people who finally get to the ability. They they get to that point in their abilities where they can hit all the notes. And they can riff. They can do the moves. But there's nothing behind it. There's nothing behind it. And you have this like you have this perfect combination of emotional content with your talent and your know-how. So you, you seem to put, you place things musically where they belong. They make sense because you shouldn't. Kids, if you learn how to riff, don't riff right away in your first like yeah. verse, you know, don't do it. But like you, you know how to place it so that it like, it tells a story, but then it's also coming from the inside. Like that's what fascinated me because I don't know many of you. I know people who can do one or the other. I know people with tons of guts, but not a lot of skill. And people with tons of skill, but no guts inside, you know? So where the hell did that <sighs> come from? God, oh, give it man. to me. This is important. This is what makes you one of my favorite singers. Okay, so, you know, back when we bought the PV Protégé when I was <laughs> nine years old, yeah, my dad and I had a practice schedule. We would rehearse singing X amount of times. God bless him, man. You know, a week for, yeah. you know, two hours or something like that. And at first, when I wanted to learn a new song, we would start the tape and I would start singing. And if I hit a bum note, if I was flat, sharp, whatever, he would stop the tape and start it over. Wow. And make me start again. He's like, no, 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 you were flat. Start over. And the history of my dad is he 
was a singer, rhythm guitar player in his family band called the Crazy G's, who were coming up at the same time as the Jackson Five mm. and playing a lot of the same shows together. Nice. Um, and I didn't know that. Yeah, and okay. he's fantastic. So I trusted everything he said. And as annoying as it was, when I would hear all my friends outside, you know, on their bikes or coming to the door, and I was practicing because my dad was making me do it for an hour or two that day. I'm really thankful for that. So that being said, it all started with, you need to be perfectly on pitch. You need to listen to what you're singing and pay attention. Uh And then once I got that down, once my pitch was unwavering, then he'd start stopping me saying, do you know what you're singing about? Do you know what this song is about? Nine or 10. And my mom would tell him, Sans, she doesn't know what love is. She's never been in love. She's too young to, to be able to sing like she's in love. And, but he would tell me, you know, to tell him what, he would ask me to tell him what I thought the song was about. Mm-hmm. And to feel it and to feel the lyric and to know that it's a story. It's not just lyrics to memorize. It's a story that you're telling and you need to make people believe you. And from that young age, that was instilled in me. And I lost it there for a little bit when I was, again, trying to be Christina Aguilera. And it was all about the skill. I was an Olympian, you know? I wanted to be an Olympian. And I forgot that it was also an art form. And so I had to be reeled back in. How'd you get it back? Bobby Wilson from Columbia College. I know that name. She she is the vocal coordinator now. But at the time, she was my voice teacher. She was in charge of jazz studies for vocals. And... She was like, okay, yeah, this is great. You know, you're singing this great. It's dead on. I love your embellishments. But why are you embellishing the word and? What's so, what's so important about the word and? Oh, my God. That's great. That's brilliant. And I'm like, I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> I, I can't even come back from that. I was like, there's nothing important about that word. And so she would go line by line with me and say, what's the most important word in this line? Circle it. Wow. What's the most important word in this line? Circle it. So we would spend an entire semester on like five songs. Wow. But I didn't need her to help me memorize songs. I needed her. And I didn't even need her for my vo- voice technique. Mm-hmm. I needed her to bring me back to that place. And she did. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Because it shows now, like everything I hear you sing, it means something, you know? And it's funny because I've been on, sh- we, you know, so the beauty, and we'll get into it, you know, we both work for the same company now. So uh, Nicole and I are, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, if you put it all, and you're kicking my ass, by the way, because the corporate thing, I don't know what, my corporate band uh, is, I don't know what we're doing, 140? shows a yeah. year maybe somewhere around yeah. there right and then when i do my original stuff and then i do the unplugged stuff for my soul i probably tap out at about 170 shows a year yeah but then you do like how over 200 yeah, <laughs> yeah what the hell? And, I I, and i don't feel like i have much room for it for other shows so i have no idea how the hell you're doing it you know but yeah i you know i've learned also i was the only lead vocalist when i first started doing the band thing that's serving you really well now because so somebody told do, me that like you, you and nicole lungs of steel you guys like seem to be the warriors who like put you in a smoky room yeah. you're gonna sing in the smoky room put you here put you there like yeah, yeah i was you know the only singer with you know a 10-piece band and two floor monitors <laughs> think about that you're yeah. screaming yeah in a smoky bar for four hours and it's and even without like that is training. Uh, yeah, I, I, like even without like formalized training behind that, if you somewhat know what you're doing and you don't shred yourself, that is going to work your muscles so much for, yeah. to do what we do. Like, I, we don't think about it now. Like, I don't know if I do like the six show run. You, you might feel this too when we run into the like, oh, we have six shows in five days, which happens a lot, people in the summertime. Oh yeah. Um, there's still that. I almost forget. Like this, it was worse. Like. 10 years ago. Oh, for sure. It was worse. Well, and you know what I think has changed a lot? I don't know if if this is you or mm. not, but because of the workload that we have now, I've learned to pace myself better yeah. and make smarter choices. And it th- that <laughs> doesn't mean that I'm going, you know, if I have a gig Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that Wednesday is going to be super boring. No. And I'm not going to put on a show because I know I have to last till Sunday. Yeah. It's just, I don't have to scream, you know, call me maybe because... <laughs> 
Carly Rae Jepsen didn't, so right. why do I have to? You know, uh, <laughs> I found an old tape of, of me. I used to do this. I was in an acapella group, and we did our own arrangements, and it was so much fun, but we would do a, a, every Wednesday. And then I'd still have an occasional Thursday in the weekend shows, and I found a tape of me when I was like 22. And every song I did was at the top of my lungs. Oh, yeah. Blah! Every, every song I did, I oh, was yeah. listening like, well, you, what a moron. Like, yeah. But it was just youthful craziness. Yeah, too. I know. Like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go. It's hard. Well, fast, and, and, you know. and then you recover a lot quicker. Yes. Back it's then. It's very, it's like you get, people get better at sex as they get older. It's the same thing. Like, <laughs> yes. you have more control. More you know control. what you're doing. Wait oh, a minute, yeah. Let me move into this, you know. Yes. Like, it's a whole different, a whole different mindset. Yep. But yeah, you have it figured out. And what I like about you is, even when, if you and I have been on the same show and it's just one of those shows where it's been a long run, your voice never fails to deliver in that emotional way. Like, you you know, if you and I are like doing a show together and we're just physically beat and there's we're trying, we want to give, yeah. but maybe there's nothing to give. Somehow the one thing that, all that training, it just shows up. It shows, it does not surprise me that you did this since fourth grade and doesn't surprise me that you did this solo for so long because yeah. when I'm with you, your voice is always there, still giving everything it has to give, you know? And you're just, you just have the gear, like that is stuck in your head now, you know? Like yeah. that's, it's instinct. It is instinct. Yeah. It's talking, it's breathing. You're one of the most real singers I know. Like that's a real singer, you mm. know? And that makes that's the difference between you. I'm serious. Top ten people. You and you're gonna like her music. You know, I should probably play like one of your songs at the end of the show, okay. at the end of this podcast. Cool. But besides that, you, you have to hear her live. You have to just go and listen, and whether it's like in a restaurant, unplugged, because the unplugged stuff we like. I love. Oh, that was so fun. But I love that. You know, because you and I can be in front of thousands or hundreds yeah. of people on a Saturday night for whatever corporation is hiring us. Yeah. But then we have to go to that Wednesday like restaurant. Yes. And just sing with a guitar or guitar uh, congas. It's just so raw yeah. and so free. Yeah, it feels good. And you you can just be yourself. You know, not that I'm not always myself, but there's times where it's, we have to play a character. Yeah, it's everything. And sing that's you. songs that we're you know not necessarily want to do but we do it because the client wants it and whatnot um but those nights it's just kind of like i'm just gonna throw out three ballads in a row and it doesn't even matter <laughs> yeah. and you know if you tell somebody that that is in the corporate market or in the club market they're like you're insane yeah but as you know and same with you they'll sit there and they'll listen they will, and they will applaud afterwards and some of them who are so conditioned to just listen to you know, yeah, hearing like a Call Me Maybe or hearing like the whatever Bruno Mars tune we're doing, they're conditioned to like, they need to love that, they want to hear it, and they hear yeah. us do it with the bands. Those same people, some of them will go to the Unplugged show and suddenly, they don't even know why, they'll say they like it better. I know. That's yes. weird, right? And yeah. It's the same people that are going like, oh, it's my night out with my girls, you know? Yeah. They'll, they, they can't even put their finger on it. No. I have been told like, you're, oh, you're always happy when you're doing your thing, but you're really happy when we see you at this unplugged yeah thing. but it's like a hang it's a hang yeah it's uh, very it intimate like, and yeah. and the people that come out to see both you and i yeah. come out to see us all the time so they become your your Friends. family yeah you know yeah you expect to see them every time you play those types of I shows talk so much at my unplugged shows. oh me too yeah i'm like, like a comedian half the time yeah. it's like it's ha <laughs> a third of that is just the jokes you know i know and at first clients like, I don't think even the restaurant people got it at first. Yeah. You know, we would do the Kenwood and, you know, the, the lady there floats. She's just like, I don't, why is he talking so much? <laughs> but then when it got to the point where, like, people were in it. And yeah. then some people were showing up more for that, like the jokes and then the occasional song, you know. So it's, I don't know. It just gets people involved. It's it's real. Organic. Yeah. Which is another thing people don't seem to get in our band world, like, sometimes talking between songs and you know because everyone's doing the same shit uh -huh. everybody's doing the same song because yep. you have to it's, yep it's you know when i got the corporate job all i thought of was this is the safest show oh yeah i was i've ever done yeah you, you know? never have to worry about being judged for the material yeah like <laughs> yeah, I, we, 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 billboard says everybody's right? listening to it or whatever yeah. they use now but it, which is weird because i the band i came from they just didn't care you know? oh so wait wait and then you saw me sing in Crown Point. Like, wh where? I was 19. Okay. I had a fake ID. 
<laughs> because not because I'm, you know, a big mom, well, a big drinker kind of, but <laughs> back then it wasn't because I wanted to go drink in the bars. Okay. It was because I wanted to be in a band and sing in the bars. All right. Um, so I was kind of doing my research on the local bands and local venues and wow, I knew about timepiece. And so I went to, I think it was the circle is okay. the name of the bar. Oh, so that was an unplugged That was an unplugged show. one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's when I had first heard you. Was there? Crazy. Yeah. And we, did, we, did we meet? Yeah, or I met you briefly, but I, every, you were like a celebrity. Everybody knew you. Oh, okay. So I was like waiting for my moment, and I didn't want to be rude. So I was just kind of like, hey, I'm a big fan. I love you. You know, I came out to see yeah. you tonight. And you're like, oh, thank you so much, whatever. And then I met Jesse, and that was it. Oh, my yeah. God. Huh. Jesse is the percussion player for Timepiece. Yeah, who used to manage it and all that, all that good stuff. Wow. So then, did you ever see the the full on band Timepiece? I've the, never seen the full. You never band. saw the full band. Okay, I couldn't. I didn't know what you saw. Yeah. You so said, that was okay. So nineteen. I was. That was two thousand three. Did you, did you sense a kindred spirit? I sensed a kindred spirit when I heard you, or I, not yet from that. Not then. Okay. I sensed it. Where were we? I can't remember where we were and what we were doing, but afterwards we walked out and you walked me to my car and I gave you my CD. Okay. And we talked for like Was this our big long minutes. Lincoln Lincoln Park walk maybe? No, I don't okay. think so. Maybe. Or was this I don't know. was this dirt? There was before that. This is before like you were working for the company. Yeah, oh yeah, much before that. Was this during like rehearsal for my CD release? Party? I bet you it was. Yep. Okay. It was the rehearsal okay. for your CD release party. And then we walked out and I gave you my CD and we stood there and talked. It felt for, like 45 minutes And or it something. was probably two hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's when you that's got That's when I knew. Yeah, okay. I was like, this dude. Kindred spirit. Yeah. Because yeah. we're so, it's so weird because we're like at least sort of a generation apart. And yet you have like the same, I was brought up by all these guys that were so much older than me. Like 25 years older than me from that that old school yeah. style of singing and that old uh -huh. school mindset. And you have all of that. So it makes so much sense. Well, all my parents listened to growing up was Motown. You know, so <laughs> yeah, every your choices, car ride, every, okay. every, you know, concert we watched on tape. Because your love whatever. of like the Stevie Wonder stuff and all uh, that, you know, that, that rings true mm. too. I hear it and I'm like, what, how does she, you know. So then by the time we got to, well, so let me let me jump back a little bit. At what point did you decide, okay, wait, I have to go back to school? It was never a question in my mind okay. that I was going to go back. It was a question in my mom's mind. So I said, okay, well, I'm taking a year off. I'll go next semester. Because I it was important to me to get a degree in something. Yeah. You know, I worked my butt off in high school for uh, some purpose. How did you, you know? find Columbia, though? How um, did that? I don't even know how I f found it. I didn't look around very far. I looked at IU and it was very classical. Yeah. I looked at Valparaiso University and it was very dry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to college to not be able to drink on my campus. That's not okay. <laughs> that goes against all of college. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I you thought have to have you the meant, full experience. I thought you meant like vocally, like I, you know, stylistically. I didn't. Know you had, like, <laughs> that too. No booze. They, it was very. It was very um, religious. Valpo's like. A dry... Dry campus. Huh. Okay. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah, and IU was just very classical. It wasn't yeah. performing arts. And then somehow, some way, I stumbled across Columbia and went to orientation and went to open house. I was like, oh, yeah, this is what I need to do. That was the fit. That's what, yeah. So here's here's where I heard about, you know... I, I've heard from multiple people who have attended that school, like, oh, Nicole Garza, she's, we know her in the hallways. And there's this certain generation that came right after you left, after you graduated, that seemed to really know you, you know? Yeah. You know, just like anything, the further we go, then nobody knows who right. set groundwork for anything. Sure. But that, that first, the people that were coming right after you, and I was working with Heidi Fifield, who you know, who's a, a sub-singer in... Um, <laughs> Not a subpar singer, mind you, folks. She's a she has a great single out, by the way. Um, but she's she works as a sub for our company, and I love her so much, and she's a good friend of mine. And I was having a glass of wine with her, and she was telling me that Nicole Garza, I'm basically studying, I'm getting a degree that Nicole Garza helped to set up. She mm -hmm. said there was no such thing as like getting a degree in in musical performance 
and business management and music management. Like the the, uh-huh. the two were not married. Well, and, and it's she's not like, even I'm, two; it's three. I mean, is it three? Okay. It's in my opinion, it's you know musical performance, it's music business, and it's music production. Oh, okay, okay. Which yeah, were three yeah, that's right. Because she degrees. got she got to the production as well, right? Yep. So she said that this. If Nicole Garza doesn't do whatever she did to like kind of you know pound her fist and say I, this has to be this way, and she which said I did. I'm not getting this degree. I'm getting this degree because she laid the groundwork for it. So that is I all these years when I thought oh everybody knows Nicole Garza I thought they knew you simply because of your amazing voice because of your instrument. I didn't know all this. Yeah. So what the hell? What did you do? <laughs> Were you marching? And oh, you're like, kind of. Yeah. It was really strange. I was already. By the time I was in college, okay, I I started my freshman year of college when I was 19, but the year between high school and college, yeah. I'd, you know, finished recording my original album, I had released it, and I had done some short tours. Okay. So I, you know, got picked up by a talent agency, like management company, and they threw me on a tour on the East Coast. And, you know, I had backup dancers and it, oh, nice. it sounds much more glamorous than it was. It was a shit show, pardon my French. Yeah. Um, but it was a super cool learning experience. You know, I didn't have a band. I played with just my instrumental tracks to my original stuff. Uh-huh. And we played at these really cool venues that other big artists had played at, like uh, Toad's Place in Connecticut, where, you know, Run DMC and Aerosmith and all these big nice. names had played. And then, you know, I got an opening slot for the big tour back then, which would be again, 2002, 2003, where uh, Missy Elliott, Alicia Keys, and Beyonce were triple headlining. And I was supposed to open for them. And then this is right around when, you know, terrorism was huge. Oh, really? Okay. And I was stationed in Jersey between shows, and the show was in New York City. And... The show was canceled. Oh, my God, really? And the bridge was shut down between Jersey and New York City because there was a bomb threat, like a car bomb threat on the bridge. So the one, like, I was like, this is it. This is my opportunity. This is going to, you know, catapult me to the next level. Got canceled. Isn't that just the way? (laughs) Go figure. What the hell? Yeah, and that was a crazy experience. My mom went down with me initially ATA Airlines, which is no longer, lost my luggage. Uh-huh. We had a show the very next day. And so I was like, this is very, you know, TMI. But I had to wash my underwear in like a gas station bathroom and was flying them out the window to dry them <laughs> so I could wear them again the next day. Because oh, no. there was nothing where we were that was open. Not a Walmart, nothing. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. So I like, this girl that I was touring with was slightly bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And... So I wore one of her her shirts, like a tube top shirt, as a skirt <laughs> for this show. <laughs> really? And I like cut up one of her black shirts and made it look cool. It was just like a black t-shirt, but I cut it low yeah. and like, you know, shredded the sleeves and cut it open from like my bra line down to my navel so my belly ring would show. I mean, it was hilarious. I just like kind of just had to throw something together in order <sighs> to make that show happen because my luggage was gone. See that's you, by the way. That's you. You when you did when you did my my CD release party. You told me I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh man, I don't have a, a keyboardist. I've never. I don't really accompany myself. <laughs> and then I I'm did. just going to have to figure it out for this show that's a couple weeks away. Yeah. Like you just did it, and then you did it. You sounded great, but I just remember thinking like. Who is this, this warrior? That's like a warrior mentality. That's the first and last time I've ever accompanied myself really? on stage. <laughs> unless I was, you know, sitting with the band and thought I was awesome because I had one too many to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the only time <sighs> I had actually, I mean, I had I had to do it for school, like sure. recitals and stuff. Yeah. But, you know. That mentality, though. Like, well, I, I, I have to get I'm it done. Do it. People yeah. don't, people get too poshed and spoiled. See, I love the fact that, like, you you know how to be a diva if you have to, but then you know how to, like, get to, you know, you can roll up your sleeves. Yeah. You have to. And then doing the Columbia thing. I think thing, you have to. I mean. So yeah, the, so the Columbia yeah. thing. Like how did you how did you get them, so, fast forward to like yeah. how you made this happen. Yeah, so the reason I was telling you the backstory about the year I was off was yeah. I was already accustomed to performing. I was already accustomed to promoting myself. And by at that time, MySpace was huge. So, you yeah. know, I was a MySpace champion and, you know, searching for all these online opportunities and going for them. Whether I wanted them or not, I just wanted to get better at auditioning. Mm-hmm. 
And so when I, when I got to Columbia and they were telling me, you need to do this, this, and this in order to get this degree, I'm like, but I want to take that class. Well, you can take it, but it's not going to go towards your degree. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, I guess this is about the experience. It's not really about the degree. Who gives a crap if I have a music degree or not? You know, right. it's about what I'm going to learn and the experience while I'm here. Uh-huh. So I just started saying, okay, I want to take, you know, production one. I want to take songwriting. I want to take music business. I want to take marketing. I want to take, you know, on top of all my music classes. So at the time, they're basically electives they were applied electives. to your... Yeah. But they really didn't apply at all. So my four-year program turned into a five-year program because I just wanted to take these classes. Well, then before I knew it, I practically had a minor in music business because I'd taken these law classes in marketing and business and mm-hmm. all these different classes. So I went and saw my counselor and she's like, well, if you just take these classes, you can have a minor in music business. So I was like, okay. She's like, or, you know, you can kind of combine the majors and just, you know, have half music major, half business. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I want a music degree, so I'm going to get the whole degree, and I'll just finish the minor. But then I was like, well, I still want to do the production thing. So I had applied to, like, the semester in L.A. A female had never gotten picked to go, and, of course, I did not get picked to go, mm-hmm. which I'm still kind of salty about. Cause yeah. I had already had production experience and songwriting experience on top of the fact I can perform the material yeah. and they were writing for film and stuff. And when they got back, they were telling the story about how they had such a hard time finding somebody to sing their material. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, God, well, I could have written, recorded it, produced it and performed and performed yeah, it, yeah. you know, ridiculous. Anywho. So I did not get picked to do that. But when I was getting ready to graduate, um, Gary Yerkins, who is now the chairman of the new program that Heidi is a part of, asked me to come into his office. And he said, you know, because of what you have done in your five years here, we're trying to create this new program called the Contemporary Urban Popular Music Program. Wow. And, you know, you've kind of... I didn't really get a jazz degree, but I didn't get a classical degree. I just kind of did what I wanted to do, and people supported me. I didn't do the required amount of concerts in the concert hall because I was already singing in a band and getting credit. So I got credit for that. My teacher said, okay, you know, prove that you have a performance, and you don't have to do the Tuesday night performance here because you have a paying gig somewhere. So because of that, they kind of incorporated everything I had done so now they have gigs for the students at bars and at venues really? that they get credit for. They don't have to necessarily do it at Columbia. That explains so much to me. And wow, then, really? Yeah, now the degree is business, it's production, and it's performance. And it's all the things that I had done. And Gary straight up told me, we're doing this because you kind of laid the groundwork for it. Why yeah. don't they just call it the Nicole Garber degree <laughs> at this point? But I'll I endorse it. I didn't know that, and that makes so much sense to me now. And this is not to slight. I mean, I've met some and worked with through the years since college some amazing people from like Western Michigan. I think those a lot of talent comes out of there. I've met people from Roosevelt. I've met I've met people from a lot of different places, and they're all very good. But some of them have this. Oh, what an amazing! They're all amazing singers. They're not all amazing performers, but like consistently the performance aspect that I see out of people from Columbia consistently for, for what I do. Now, I don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't do any theater. I don't do any straight gig. Everything I do is this kind of band world, so we're singing sure. the popular music. But whoever, I, whoever seems to end up on my stage from Columbia College, just they bring it. And then yep. I've noticed that when I look around, and you've mentioned that to me too, uh-huh. that at Columbia College, they just, everybody that I see from a singing standpoint, especially, they just, there's a show attached to it. But I didn't know that they're put in bars and stuff. Cause I've been, people who listen to the podcast have heard me say like a number of times to me, the mo- I'm not even one of those. I don't have a music degree. So I've all, but I've always said the most dangerous performers are the ones who totally get the schooling, get a true musical degree, know, know the craft, like to the utmost degree like that in a, in a training sort of situation, but then ends up in a bar, ends yeah. up in that bar doing. Gritty, yeah. Yeah, and, and, those, and you're one of them. Those are the most dangerous. You know, I think Sarah Marie Young's, you yep. know, amazing too. Like, I had no idea. That makes so much sense. No, yep. Oh, man, just go to Columbia. We should get yeah, a, right? some sort of advertising deal for them. <laughs> for sure. Because now I'm a huge fan of that place. Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. It's very um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? It's not your typical education. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your theory, music theory, your your training, your, you know, difficult classes that you're like up all night writing papers for and transcribing and... Which can happen at any good music school or music-based degree. Yeah, you're getting that Mm -hmm. part of it, but you're also getting the, no, you, you have to... You have to know what you're singing about. You have to know where you're going with yeah. this. You have to be able to lead a band. You have to be able to arrange the material and put it in your own key. Um, so it's kind of the all around, this is the tools you need in order to run your own band. Yeah, because I've met people, and, and it's not even a slight anyway, because I've met some of my favorite performers and singers are from other schools and such too. But a lot of them have come into this and have worked their way to becoming more of a leader for themselves. For sure. Where I mean you kinda had it in your DNA though. You know? I because did. right from the get go you were you were a band leader. You were a leader. I was never afraid you know? of leading. No. Mostly no. because if some I let somebody else do it for me, it wasn't yeah. right. <laughs> but even even like you <laughs> I'm know a control I, freak. I had I had I had a couple of years I had some groundwork ahead of you because I was doing it before. You know, I was I'm older so I was than you so I was doing it before you and even when, even early on when you would have random questions, all of your questions were based on, yeah, but I got to lead this damn band. But yeah. if I'm going to do this, uh, what, what's your take on Like even your questions were never like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Your questions were, no, no, I know what I'm doing. Do you have, a, do you have like a, a, another in piece of insight to make sure I do this? Like I remember yeah. when I interviewed you for a paper or a class that yeah. I was in Columbia for, and I came to your hood and yeah. sat on your couch and we just kind of, went through the questions, Uh I remember how useful and how amazing those answers were to me that I still have the document saved. Get out of here. I didn't want to get rid of it because I referenced it very often. I didn't know that. Yeah, it wasn't just for the class. You know, it was personally, you know, if I was going through something where I needed somebody's opinion Mm -hmm. or whatever, I remembered that I had those, those questions. And Wow. Yeah. Well, that's very cool, man. Because, yeah, and then it all feeds itself because, seriously, anybody listening, I mean, she figured it out. Like, this is the path you take because we all know how hard it is to get, like, the humongous, like, record deal. And it could still happen for anybody because I thought Sharon Jones from the Dap Kings, Kings, uh, I thought she'd been around forever because she's much older. Yeah. And I heard she has not been around that long. She really? Hit, yeah, she hit like 10 years ago or something. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and everyone thought just because of her age, like, yeah. oh, man, she's probably, you know, she was probably yeah. doing stuff in the 60s. No, I heard she, she she got discovered fairly recently. No kidding. So it's never too late. But the thing is, if if we don't, like, if performers, songwriters, if you want to do this for a living, if you don't arm yourself with, with the education to go along with your drive, then you just have this empty drive, but no brains behind it. You know, right. the same way. It's, Stevie Wonder has a PhD. Does he really? Yeah, in music. No way. Yep. I didn't know that. Jeez, well, it figures, it shows. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was born with it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's it's so weird because you have to have both. You have to have the emotional content while you're doing it. So you have to work from the inside out and use your heart and your guts and your emotion. Use Use what's inside. No matter what it is, just use it, and that's going to make you a better performer. But then use your brains, people. Use your freaking brains. Yeah. Learn the craft and learn your own shit. Learn your business because everything you do, even from a marketing standpoint, because now I used to feel like I was giving you tips on aspects of this world. But now after you got out of Columbia, I'm looking like, holy crap. I, like I'm learning from you from a marketing standpoint. I, I always feel like, wow, she has it down more than anybody who's like their own act. Because these days, if you're not signed, you're your own team. Yep. And you work yourself as your own team better than anybody I know. Because even the people that I see who've done it, who I respect, they have people helping them. Yeah. You know, you're the only one I've seen who like you really, you know, I've, I've had to, I'm, I've, whether it was back in my space and even Facebook, like I'm, I figure it out, but I'm like slower as I get in there. Sure. But your marketing is just on point. Your, your email blast is on point. Like the way you, like, how'd you find Reverb Nation even? Like the, you utilize all these things. I do. And I, again, I don't know how I found it. It just kind of popped up. I was like, Ooh, what is this? I was 
at a point in my career, probably 10 years ago, where I wanted my music and my face on every website possible. Yeah. So I found MySpace, and then from there I found Broad Jam Music, which I'm still a part of, and they actually host my website. And then I got into web design and graphic design, and so then I would make my own posters and taught myself that whole trade. And they looked good. And... Then from there, it's like any other site. Oh, now there's like this band site and this band site. And you can put yourself on Spotify. And oh, here's CD Baby. And here's all these things. And it's like, okay, why not? Yeah. You know? So it's beyond just like finding a good Instagram picture of somebody. It's like... Forget about it. Just put yourself everywhere. People need to like put themselves out there. Everywhere. Yeah. Because all that serves... It serves you really well. Yeah. You know? And I know a lot of people are leery about putting their music up on free sites and Mm -hmm. whatnot. But until you're Taylor Swift... Does that, you know, 66 cents matter that much? You know, that more so a, than the exposure. That's a perspective just, I've not heard. Yeah, you're just, right. Just get the exposure. I mean, otherwise your CDs are going to be sitting in your basement anyways. Yeah, so. yeah. Put it out there. Put it out there. Oh, yeah. man. Put it out See, there. This is why I like you so smart. <laughs> oh, I get I'm, not, to, I'm not cheap. <laughs> I, get to, <laughs> no, I get to experience, because I'm, I'm so used to... I get to experience just this this voice of yours. But too, when I talk to you, I'm I, I I've never felt more connected to a it's performer just and a just a musical person. We seem to want the same things, yeah. and we have the same approach. But yeah. man, but then Absolutely. when I get into like the nitty gritty of the intelligent marketing side of things, it's just you're smart. Oh, thanks. You're really smart. Thanks so but much. People need to know this. People need to listen to this because it's it's all about what you what you what you put in your brain and then how do you utilize it and. Everybody still wants like, oh, I'll have people. You know, yeah. I should be a star, and they're just mad because they're not a star. You know, and then yeah. you and I have walked this this path because, folks, when I came out with uh, with what I thought was the best CD I'd I, I'd, I'd ever done, it was like my third voice CD, Prince? the Voice Prince yes. CD. I you, know it all by memory. You know the Voice Prince. Oh, yes. Look at you. Well, you're my favorite. Vo- Every time you get song to come order. In. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, I never, I never asked your opinion of the. You know, I, you, you said it. You, you, you say, hey man, it's good CD. I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, it's cool. <laughs> so we had a real cool exchange. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was. Uh, I think you. I can't even remember what. That, maybe I was dropping you off flyers for the party yeah, or something. Yeah, maybe. Hey man, good CD. It's good CD. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, so you were funny. like so much younger than me, and I just thought. Thanks, man. I wanted, to, <laughs> what I wanted to say, like, oh, really? Why? What'd you, what'd you like? But you know, I thought she's being really cool, and you know, I should come off as cool too. So. <laughs> oh, you're so silly. Thanks. In retrospect, this this is so <laughs> funny to me really? because I was totally like enamored and in awe of you. Oh, man. So the fact that you were trying to play it cool around yeah, me, and yeah. I was trying to play it cool around you, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. We, we, we probably could have gushed and oh, gushed my right gosh. back then. Hey, man, good CD. <laughs> yeah, man, thanks. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's so funny. No, but when I when I when that came out, I had the big decision because suddenly the group Final Say came up. Did yeah. you know my brother named Final Say? No. Yeah, my brother Paul. Get yeah. out of here. Because they, they told me, well, we have uh, Maggie Speaks and we have Spoken For and we need another clone band for this yeah. you know, corporate band and we want to build it around you, you know. I'm like, all right. So then I said yes. It took me about three months to say yes because mm. I didn't know them. I didn't know who to trust. Yeah. And I had a pretty good thing going for me. Yeah. But when I finally said yes, uh, my brother Paul said, let's see, Maggie speaks, spoken for, final say. You know? Just like that. Yeah. And I walked in and I was so, <laughs> Paul? oh, Paul. And I was so, Creative who's bastard. a writer anyway? Creative yeah, yeah. Bastard. So that's the thing. He's that guy. Yep. Um, he's one, he's, he's a, another, he's, a, he's the guy that saw me writing all through life. And then he's like, oh, that's great. Uh, uh, Robbie inspires me. And then the bastard became a better writer than oh, me. I'm like, that, this is better than Get me. Get out of here. Yeah, so I, I hate him so much. That's too funny. No, he's brilliant, man. But anyway, I remember walking in and I, w- I still had to finish off the timepiece shows so I couldn't like jump right into the final say shows but I had to do some sort of showcase Dave was like listen you're going to come in Dave is our boss you know you're going to come in you're going to sing for these potential clients because they don't know this new band you know that we're going to be in that we don't even have a name for right and I was so mad because timepiece was asked because of me they were asked to be in a movie with Tim Robbins (sighs) 
and the casting director called me and all this and we set it all up and then I realized I couldn't do it and the casting director almost didn't use them and she said but you're the one we want to see dancing and singing you know oh no and so they had to find some other guy with and I, I think I was already shaving my head bald by that time but they got some guy with big curly hair oh my and gosh. they never even got any screen time but they spent all but still they're on a movie set while yeah. I was like singing Jesse's Girl oh, get out. for these clients you know that's weird it's just it's a weird exchange it's it's sometimes hard, but you have to look at the big picture. You know, yep. I was asked to sing backup for Steve Algieri, which is uh, one of the singers after Steve Perry for Journey. Oh, okay. And they were also giving me a couple leads, which I was like, well, this is sweet. They're touring. They're, you know, doing this whole Rock of Ages sort of thing. <sighs> and I was on a spoken for wedding oh. <laughs> and I was written into the contract from the bride and I could not get out of it. So I had to sub out the Steve Augiri gig oh, and I gave man. it to my best friend from college, Sally Blandon. Okay. And she still sings with him and tours all over the world oh, with him. My God. So yeah. it worked out. It, you yeah. know, I'm not unhappy where I am. I'm very fortunate. And yeah. you know, she needed a gig. She got a gig. So right. it worked out, but I understand your pain. I'm it's like, weird. Oh God, <laughs> it's you know? weird, right? Could be touring yeah. with Journey right now. You know, I do remember realizing that those. You know, I went in and said, "Oh, my brother said final say." You know, and and then Dave turned to the other boss and said, "Guys, final say." And then hours later, they sent me an email saying. You know, so we just bought uh, finalsay.com. We had to buy it from somebody. It cost us, you know, whatever, eight grand. or so. They had to drop some oh, cash to buy out. it. Yeah. But I remember thinking, wow, they dropped that. Okay, this is a serious organization. I like, had to they... drop some cash for NicoleGarza.com. Did you? I did. Who was it? Who was, did you see who the um, other Nicole Garza was? There is a famous they're... actress. Okay. They're twins, Nicole and Natalie Garza. Uh-huh. And they were both on the OC, which was like California-based teeny bopper show that I was obsessed with when I was younger. <laughs> okay. Um, they're blonde, so it's crazy. Both Nicole, Gar- the Nicole, Nicole Garza. Nicole and Natalie. Is, okay. Yeah, huh. blonde, very fair-complected, which is funny. Um, but I wanted to buy it, and they said it was owned. And I, you know, I went on NicoleGarza.com, and I yeah. saw that it was who it was owned by. I was like, oh, I remember her. She was on TV, whatever. And so I just messaged her. Hey, you know, what are the chances... I can. Why would she give it up? Did she, I can get this. She, she never got back to me. Oh. And then all of a sudden on bravenet.com, I was able to get it for like $1,000. What's bravenet.com? It's a domain site. Oh, it's okay. a hosting site too. Um, I now have it through GoDaddy. Yeah, that's um, who I use. Yeah. But back then, BraveNet was the thing. And I don't know how or why. It just became free. It just became free. But free, you still but had to it drop some cash. But it wasn't $9 a month. Yeah. It was a you can have Nicole Garza for thousand dollars so i don't know if nicole garza actress needed a thousand dollars that bad (laughs) or or how it happened we'll have to like google and see what she's up to well it's funny if you google nicole garza yeah the first like three pages on google are me and then she shows up (laughs) i wonder if there's i hope there's not like some sad article like well i really thought i could get it back together but then once i lost my domain name (laughs) I just gave up on acting. <laughs> you killed a career. Uh, I don't know. I doubt that. I just don't care anymore. I doubt that. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh that'd be weird, man. Well, so I don't know yeah. how or why, but... Huh. But it's the choices. No, it's, it's, it's you know... Because then, I guess you guys should know the story. You know, um, once I got to meet Nicole and she did the party... And then I was I I just quickly started to become such a fan of you of who you are and what you are, and then I got this corporate gig, right when my CD came out, which was of t- talk about hard. So did I think oh. about that? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, that's right. I did my first non like just my regular fan show. It was Market Days in Chicago, and I was on ABC. And there, oh, that's a great you know, almost festival. Almost a thousand. There was so many. I didn't even know that you pay, played Market yeah, Days. Yeah, so it was the first big thing I did just as Robbie Celestin, that's and great. just oh, it was rough because I knew that like I this. I can't keep doing this. And I feel I felt like I was going to build steam, like something was happening here. But then I also realized, yeah, but it could be fleeting. Like yeah. I, w- I was just done with that part of the chase. Yeah. I still want to write. I still want to perform. The, you know, the original shows, as you know, still happen. But I was done with the, the 
big chase, you know. I think yeah. you and I had, oh, but anyways, but, uh, next thing I know, the corporate group I'm in where it's three clone groups doing the same material. They had one floater, a girl named Dana Mallow, who had an amazing voice. I loved her pipes, you know. She had lungs yeah. of steel. Oh, girl. yeah. By the way, I think lungs of steel, is like you coined that phrase. I was talking <laughs> about, I, it's funny because I always use you now when I say lungs of steel, but I was talking about her and the way she would sing some of the Kelly Clarks and stuff, and then you said, that chick, man, lungs of steel. Did I ever tell you why, where? Where I got that from? No. So I was, I don't know if you know this, but in the college performance arena, you have to do like these recital performances in front of the directors of the program. Okay. And they're called juries and vocal juries. Hardcore. So, you know, I had to show up on like a Saturday morning. It's like 10 a.m. to sing like my five jazz tunes to all the vocal teachers and yeah. the chairperson of the department. And... I'm eating a bag of nacho cheese Doritos <laughs> before I go in there. And this girl, Lashira Moore, who is a monster singer, she sings with um, Chris Forte Band now and okay. Larry King sometimes. Um, but I was eating these Doritos and she's like, girl, what are you going to do? Wash that down with some milk? <laughs> and I was like, you got some? <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm hungry, dude. Like, there's the vending machine. I just got some Doritos. She's like, and then you're going to go in there and sing? I was like, I've never had an issue with eating or drinking or whatever before I sing, ever. Yeah. So it was kind of blowing my mind because I hadn't heard that very often. And so she was like, you must have lungs of steel, girl. <laughs> that's how it yes. From. Yes. Well, that's so. good. That's good that it was spawned by you because you, I use that when I talk about you all the time. Oh, that's you know? funny. But I'm sure millions of people have coined that phrase, but that's where it first initially hit my oh, man. radar. But that's, you know, because you're like a road warrior, you know. You have, the, you have the, the, like the training and the vibe of somebody who's been doing it for like 80 years, but still in this like young voice and young body, you know. So it's like, it makes you dangerous. Mm. But I remember, you know. Anyway, dangerous. <laughs> they, they were, they were, they had, they needed a girl. They needed to add a girl to the company. So I said, oh, I know a girl. You know, I, I think I brought the other the other Nicole we know as well, and she didn't get the gig. But I remember uh, putting your name in the hat, and you went up there, and you got the gig like with the quickness. Well, you know what's funny? Yeah. I just told this story to Becky, I think okay. Schneider, and because we were at the female auditions a couple of weeks ago, oh, and yeah, I was yeah. like, "Man, we didn't have this." No, you know, no, this is crazy. Like how this is going down. I was like, I got asked to show up at Harris Casino. Robbie asked me what tunes I knew off the song list. I went up there sang like three tunes and, and then I got off the stage and then I had met three dudes. I didn't know who they were. I was just like, Hey, what's up? And then, you know, looking back on it, it was the three bosses. Yeah. I had no idea who they were. <laughs> I didn't do any research. I just showed up and just kind of did my thing. Never used in-ears. I don't even think I I I don't even know if I had in-ears for the audition. No, I think you had to borrow some for that day, but you killed it. You know, it's so funny. So now here you are it's doing so like funny. full time, you know, now she's in the same company that I'm in, you know, and it's, it's like, what else, not what else could you ask for? But I mean, that's what it's all about. Like when I got this gig, I like looked back and remembered, whoa, 13 year old Robbie just wanted to sing for a living. That's yeah. so funny. You know, I say that all the time. It's like, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you're not being utilized or you're not, yeah. you know, living up to your full potential. Right. And, and I get that all the time and it kind of makes my heart break a little bit. But then I think back to the, okay, Nicole Garza didn't always want to be the next Katy Perry. Right. She, Nicole Garza just wanted to sing and have a family and do her thing. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, you know, I've had a million opportunities to move far away and do my thing elsewhere and start yeah. a career elsewhere. But I am such a family person. I could never leave my parents and my sister ever. Me neither. Never. Yeah. So even if I were to become the next whatever, I would still probably live in Chicago and commute to wherever I needed to commute or have a house in LA or wherever I needed to have a house. But Family comes first to me. See, you, you did know? it right, man. Wait, well, let's so take I'm the three. Okay. Want to take the two second pause? Sure. And we're back. I always tell the audience that's like an eye blink for them, and it's like seven minutes of chill yeah, time for uh -huh. us. So they sure. have a blink. Are right, you ready? We're going to sing for the audience. Ready? One, two. Don't back out of this ride. Don't leave this heart denied. Just slip on over 
to my side so we can do Pretty sure I got a little flat on the second of the, the third line. Oh, That's called it was beautiful. We can do. We can do. Yep. And I was I was driving to a gig, a casino gig, and I had the mighty Sarah Young on it. Folks, look for Sarah Young. She's, she's my idol. She's too freaking good. We went to school together and Gosh, she's still my idol. So good. I'm gonna, I gotta have her on eventually. But anyway. Yeah, you should. Um driving and i I've always wanted to do a duet with you. It's just a long time coming, and all of a sudden, I'm driving, and, uh, dun, 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 and th- there was a verse. Da, 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 da. That's a verse, by the way. And I'm thinking of this whole thing. I'm like, man, I have a melody here. So I pull the car in. I'm, I need to get into the show, and I just sing this entire. I have the verse. I have the bridge. I have a, like a pre-chorus, and I j- just know. Don't you love when that happens on yes. like rides? It was weird. Somewhere? Yeah. So in like five minutes, I recorded the entire just melody without any lyrics. I'm like, oh, I need a chorus, and all of a sudden, don't back up. All that came to me. The chorus just fucking. Yeah. That just hit. And then I, I thought, oh my God, I got, I've got to record like a harmony. I got And then I went in and Sarah Young was on the gig. So I'm like, hey, she's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, listen to this and do this part. <laughs> so then we recorded that. So I have that. Now it's nice to have it like with your actual voice on it. Love um, it. But man, we're, that's, that's, we're going to do a duet. Yeah. All right. Long that's overdue. Gonna, that's going to be a good, it's going to be fun. Watch. You know, I, yeah. I know I said it's long overdue, but I'm glad we waited. For this point, like where yeah, we are, yeah, we've grown so much. We've grown so much. Uh, not just our asses. Well, you just did give me a turtle cookie, so <laughs> I did give you my a ass did just grow. <laughs> no, seriously, man. But it's it, so like moving forward. It's so crazy because now, even when you got like the gig, the big corporate gig, because you won that contest by like a landslide. So she, Nicole, gets the gig. I get her the audition, but she gets the gig, and. Two I'm forever thing- thankful, by the way. Oh, two things impress me so much. I've helped a lot of people like throughout the years and stuff. I've tried really hard, and I've been helped. Yeah. You know, you're one of the most gracious people I've ever met. Like you're, it you're, you yeah. I helped you get in the door, but you're all of all of your work. You know, the whole what luck is when what, preparation meets opportunity. You know, you were prepared. You know, you came and you <sighs> brought it, but. I always Nobody tell. has ever you you. I did that original show, and, and didn't know who was coming. You brought like sixteen people out, and I'm like, you didn't. I'm like, you could have told me. I would have gotten you, and you made them pay. You made your I friends did. pay. Yes. You came up to me and you said, "You got me this gig. I'll, you know, I appreciate it." Like I'm, I, I appreciate it. And nobody, you know, I, Becky Schneider's been pretty good about it too. But it's just not un, people usually get it, and then we forget that somebody helped us and you're so gracious more than you have to be and i'll uh, that that i think people forget yeah yeah once they get successful i think they forget why and how they became successful maybe because we know never forget that's amazing i worked my ass off yeah you know and and i never got a handout i never was told i'm gonna help you Mm -hmm. it was always people shooting me down and shooting me down so when i finally got a handout yeah it was like oh Okay, well, this guy thinks I can do this. This yeah. guy thinks I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, yep. I'll forever, you know, be indebted for you just for the mere fact that you believed that you could put your name on the line for me. Yeah, that meant, that meant the world. Uh, it just, I think because maybe it's because it's, it, we're the ones who get the gig, it's our talent. So the, I wonder if that makes a performer forget, like, oh, somebody helped me. Because in the end, you're like, see, I was good enough to do this. I wonder if they if that gets blurry or something. It must. Because I feel the same way. I feel thankful to anybody that, you know, gives me the... I'm thankful, you know, to Dave Calzaretta. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let the guy know every couple of uh-huh. years, like, you know, you changed my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, know, I, you gave me this gig that's... I'm a full-time singer uh-huh. because of you. Absolutely. You know? I, I, I let him know that. I, but, I yeah. do, too. But the two things that blew my mind... I was already impressed with who you were. I was already impressed with your skill. I became a bigger fan once you came in the company because I got to experience you working through these cover tunes. You know, I always told you the way you sing I Love Rock and Roll is like the best, one of the best renditions Which of any song. Which sounds so silly. Yeah, it's one of the know? best renditions of any song I've ever heard because you just, you make it a whole different, you don't change the melody, you stay true to the melody, but you do these things, these tasty ass things that the best vocalists It's a sexy wish song. They, only when you do it. 
<laughs> I think it's a sexy yeah, song. But it's like it's an okay song. Yeah. But when you do it, it's sexy and it like oh you give it grit. Dare I say even our good buddy Sarah couldn't do what you do to that song. Like you just you know, go see Maggie Speaks. Oh yeah, by the way, so then she ends up Nicole ends up in the group that needed somebody, but then eventually the flagship group needed a girl and naturally they put you right in the band. So it's like you just worked you know you got the opportunity yeah. I'm, I'm honored that i had anything to do with that but then all of a sudden just your talent your skill your work ethic super like, cool now i have choice. like a voice and an opinion you yes, know it's yes. like yeah what do you think about this yeah yeah you know i mean you just yeah you know, it's nice it's, to kind of you know be the standard which is you're something such, i've worked for you're you know? so good at this too because then i would you know i'd been in the company longer than you and then they made me a band leader so if i would come on the maggie speaks show as a vocalist you were still new as their vocalist so would, there would almost be this part where i was maybe still i think you were you figured out the spoken for thing but now you had to learn the maggie speaks culture here's sure. a bunch of different guys right so i was i might have been a little more comfortable leading on the maggie camp when I sang with you, right, and maybe twice, and yeah. then the, by the third time I got there, I'm like, "This is her band. <laughs> like she knows how to take. She's running this whole show. And like you did it so fast. And not only was it a new band, but it's a band that consists of the owners of the company. And you just knew how to make it your band. Well, you know? So I take it back. There's three things that impressed me. Or wait, what are you gonna? There's just I'm very conscious of ego mm -hmm. and not stepping on people's toes to a fault you're brilliant though at it to a fault at times though really you know um so i actually had a sit down with dave and he's like make this your band like do your thing yeah you know be a front person talk to the audience i put you in this band because of what you did and spoken for so do that here yeah and i just needed the okay because he, I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Yeah, no, you're brilliant at that. You know, and this this is what I guess it's it's a three prong, brilliant sort of uh, you know fork you stuck in me. <laughs> so I don't ever want to take it out. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, let me tell you how you slipped in your brilliance. Um, basically, it, it, first off, it was watching you be able to take over that that group. Um, it was also just the fact that you were so good that you knew how to like, you know, I mean, you, you fell in, you know, I knew you would, but I mean, it's still something to suggest somebody, but then you, you want to see it happen and you over exceeded. But then the other thing is you really went in as this girl who you led bands, yeah. you led bands, you were the focal point and it was only you and on you. And I had to, I, I was, I had one, I, there was one area where I was a little luckier than you is I was forced to work with a, a singing partner for many, many years. And I had to learn this, whatever, like, oh, she's going to dance. I'm going to take the two steps back. Oh, I'm right. going to dance. Take the two steps. And early on, I remember that was the only thing that I'd noticed. Like there was a, the little struggle and you weren't, it's funny because you weren't like a show stealer. No. You were just so used to, I'm, I'm the, Being you in know. the front. So then I thought, yeah. oh, here's, uh, we did a show together. And I thought, oh, well, here's, hey, I think this is probably a song where I would do my little dance break. And, and then maybe you were like right there with me. You yeah. weren't like in front of me waving your arms, <laughs> but you were there. And it was just... I could tell, like, you, you hadn't done the teamwork thing. And this is what, this might have blown me away more than anything else at the time. We talked about it. I think there was an email just to explain it, because then they're like, well, you should talk to her about it. And there's an email basically talking about stage performance. And I swear to God, any other singer in the planet, lead singer who'd led a band, would not have taken criticism well. And all you did, because you're so smart and you're a learner, you just thought, okay, wait, okay, I'm processing. Okay, oh, yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah, and let's do this two-part thing. There's two of us. You know, sometimes I'll step up, sometimes you step. Yeah, I got, it was the most, I thought I crafted this intelligent email and your response was even more intelligent than my intelligent email. I don't even remember yeah. this. And I thought, what the hell? I, I, I was so blown away by that because you just, people, be Nicole Garza. Just singers, be Nicole Garza. Do you want to succeed? Be Nicole Garza. Do you want to do this full time? Be Nicole Garza because she knows how to figure it out. She knows how to evolve. She knows how to take ego out of the game, yet still be the better singer than, you know, be the best singer in the room. You know, you learn how to be the best you can be, but have no ego. Learn how to learn. 
because that's what you, you figured know, out and not enough people do that. And you know, the biggest piece of advice I would give to people is mm. don't try and be better than your neighbor. Be yeah. the best version that you can be of yourself because everybody's so different. Everybody's so different. Everybody. It's yeah. like you put me next to anybody and everybody has something that they bring to the table. Yeah. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses and play them t- to your advantage for yourself. Not It's not baseball. No. It's music. We're supposed to be working together. It's supposed to be teamwork. And I no longer, and I used to, you know, I no longer feel like I have to win the gig because yeah. honestly, I'm make, you know, working 210 gigs a year. Right. Take a couple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take a couple from me. But Let me go to Florida, you know. Um, wouldn't you say beyond that, it even helps you to enjoy the gig? Because oh, yeah. If you're not always trying to compete with the people around yes. you, you actually can step back and enjoy, enjoy. yourself and enjoy other people. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I've, I'm such a, you know, I've, I said this before on other podcasts, the best advice my dad ever gave me was be a fan of who you're on stage with. I lose myself sometimes when I'm on stage with you. Ah. I do. And this is 100% honest. Just, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were playing on, you know, the day after Christmas, I forgot what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> because I was listening to you. I was like, oh, I forgot. I'm on stage. I'm supposed to be oh, doing man. something. But those are the moments I live for yeah, when right? it's hard to concentrate. Because that's what music is. It takes you away. And the moments like that when I sing with you or sing with like a Paul Mabin or a Sarah Young, yeah. I lose myself and I forget where I am. Oh, and those are the moments I live for. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's amazing. It's so funny because people just, once people take the competitive thing out of the equation, they have no idea how much more they're going to. It's so <gasps> free because you enjoy the gig and you enjoy yeah. yourself you know yeah and and not only that if like folks if you want to win the show here's how you win the show somebody they just have to love somebody in the band so that's gone a long way with me i think you and i have both been in situations where we're sitting there after we've done a gig together or something and someone uh, will you know come up to me and say like oh my god you are so good and they won't say something to you or they'd come up to you and say right. oh my god you are so good and they won't say anything to right. me like there's one time it they said it all the time they said it right to you and you like give me the elbow because in my mind said it's Oh, good. Yeah, and all I can do is say, she is, right? <laughs> because yeah. first off, I agree. Secondly, as long as they like somebody up there, cause it, and this is something There's I want to share with singers. There's a reason we're all sharing the stage. Yeah. If you're, if you're up there and, you got, and you're getting paid and you're doing this, you won. There's nothing. There's, an, right. it, there's no competition. You are the winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like people don't. I only compete with me. I only compete me with too. myself. I, I get inspired if somebody really like blows out some hard stuff. Like if we were doing yeah. a duet and stuff or something. If I hear you do like nail. If I hear you nail something and then yeah. I come up at bat right after, it inspires me. Like oh yeah. shit, I gotta go do that. Like but more right. of a more of a. It's just pure inspiration. You it know? is. It's energy. Yeah, and then I enjoy it more. Yes. You know, it's I energy. I know I know people that are like in their forties who still can't get past it and Mm. and then it makes it what it does is it it transforms into bitterness in high school yeah you know her taylor garrison yeah she was my arch nemesis (laughs) really we were both short Mm -hmm. both dark hair both can sing our asses off (laughs) and you know one year i won the talent show and the next year she won the talent show and it's like who's better you know the battle of who's better yeah and then she had this boyfriend and i stole the boyfriend from her because just to prove that i could (laughs) this is a movie and it's totally ridiculous now she's one of my best friends wow you know i'm going to see her perform tonight really it's like what the hell man you got to keep those people that you admire close to you Mm -hmm. for several reasons inspiration entertainment and for when you need somebody to sub for you. <laughs> <laughs> the most all-around answer anybody could give to yeah. that. Yeah. Well, but, and, yeah. and you have more in common with people that are just like you. Yeah. So you can do this podcast thing for yeah. hours and not even realize you're being recorded. You know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, but uh, you're, you're so gracious on stage, too. I mean, that's what I like about, about you is you're so giving. Even if you're, you know, I th- you and I do so many things in a similar fashion even if there's somebody that maybe they're not that good yeah. but they're up there giving it 
And what can you do? You know, you can make or break somebody. And, yeah. and I think both of us like just give, Uh huh. you know, cause it's like, I don't want to make anybody feel stupid or no, look stupid no. or yeah, it makes everything uncomfortable. Why would, you know, I don't understand why people, that and, happens. And if they're it's really good, really. if they like, you know, it's funny. I, I've actually been asked, like, what do you do if you're on a gig and you're doing your four hour gig and then somebody walks in and just, you know, let them up there and then they kill it and then they leave and then you're like left there. <laughs> and I've done that where like, I've, I've, you've walked in and gotten like this monstrous applause, you know, cause you just kill it and it's a different energy. And I, I just, I don't, I just don't have that gear in me. Like all I feel is like, uh, I, I just feel happy that it happened. You I make know? a joke about it. Well, I, I, I'm like, but, well, how am I supposed to follow that? Yeah, well, I always tell, <laughs> I thing. was talking to a friend of mine who, again, a guy that's been doing it forever in his 40s, and I'd mentioned to him, like, oh, my God, I love when I have, like, guest vocalists. They just, like, kill it and da-da-da-da-da. And he's like, yeah, but then what happens if they out sing? I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't even understand the question. Out-sing? For one thing, I'm having so much fun that anything I'd rather have somebody kill it and be better than me up there than have somebody not be better. How For I, one thing, I'm not going to be entertained. I want to entertain me. On top of that, my crowd now knows that like for the most part if I go to one of Robbie's shows and he puts somebody on the mic, they're going to kill it. Right. So it's like a gift to me, it's a gift to the crowd. It's like, "Oh my god, please come up here and Save me from myself, even like I'm having right. fun. I think I'm doing good. Come up here and do think, better, so I, I can hear it. People started thinking that way. It's like I call it the American Idol mentality, because <laughs> I've always called f- it bar band mentality. <laughs> but that's a good one. That's- well, because it's like the first, you know, month of American Idol, uh, you know, of the series of the TV show, is all the bad people, and then we'll sprinkle in a good person here or there. <laughs> So it's like, why would you let the good person on? American Idol doesn't. You know? oh, <laughs> they wow. let all the bad people up there. I never there. thought of that. Okay. So I call that the American Idol mentality when people are like, you can't let them go up there. You know, they might be better than you. Well, <sighs> okay, well, number one, it's my name on the sign. Yeah. So if I'm calling somebody up there, there to sing, they better be halfway decent or else my fans are going to be upset with me. Yep. And it's an uncomfortable situation. And and I don't want to outshine anybody to the point where it's embarrassing either. Right. So yeah. it's just... It should be an even playing I field. I love the fact that you can blow hard with your voice. You could just go if I ask you to come up there because you expect that I expect it from you. You do, yeah. I'm like, do the thing because <laughs> I keep talking. You know, I mean, people out there, if, you're, if you want to, your biggest concern should be your own, how you look to the public. Yes. And I don't mean that um, how you look as a vocalist compared to another vocalist. I mean, put your name out there. If I see somebody coming up, I want them to know that I'm going to talk this person up. So that person better be so great because, yeah, you're, like you said, your name's out there. You know, be known as a per. You know, if not, if they're just, if you make sure you're just getting somebody less good and not as good as you, then you just become that person whose opinion no one's going to trust. Like, well, I guess so, but he said right. he said he was going to be good. Right. <laughs> you know, like right. I want them to trust me. I want them to know right. that when I'm really excited, like this is a singer you need to hear. Absolutely. I want them to know they're going to get that. You know, right. it's just, it's all play. And, and I think we need like, to like get out of the mentality of right. that. Well, too. like when you needed a new vocalist for final say. Oh yeah. All through college, Morgan and I were compared to each other and it drove me freaking insane. Did you say they called her like the young? Mini Garza. Yeah, 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 yeah. They called her Mini Garza. And, you know, I could have been like, oh, she's perfect for the gig, but. I'm not going to say anything right, sort of right. thing. And you're the one who kind of handed yeah. you know, her. Her so, name came across because of you. And it's so weird because you know me. So you're more than anybody else. You were the one who was able to say, this is your girl. This yeah. is who you can perform with. Uh-huh. She's your show. Yep. You know. And I remember, the. I, now I feel bad. I'll admit it to the public <laughs> now. Uh, Nicole mentioned it to me, mentioned this name because we needed a new girl. And... The night after, because I'd been griping, they were going to give me somebody who shouldn't have been anywhere near our camp. And I fought them on it, you know. And I was complaining to you. Uh And you're like, I know somebody. You know, you should look up this girl. And then the next day they they said, all right, we keep hearing you. You're bitching a lot, Robbie. We're going to, here's five (laughs) names that came across our desk. Her name was on there. I almost ignored all the other names because I trust you so much. And then once I listened to her. Well, and the funniest her, part is you know, that I told you about her, but somebody else told them about her. Yeah. It, yeah. It was Paul, Paul Maven, Maven who yeah. put her name in the pot. Yeah. It was just, it just so, it was a perfect, st- she got the perfect storm. Yeah. Because it, Paul Maven gave all these names in and I'm like, 
Oh, Nicole, because when you said you you said you thought she was unavailable though. Yeah. You just said this would because I knew the, she was working. Yeah. She's so good. You said this would be the girl for you, yeah. but you you thought she was. I, you, I thought, and she almost. Well, you were right to a point. She didn't sign the paper. Right. You know? But anyway, yeah. yeah so, God, see how much there's to learn from you, man. Well, it's just it's a revolving. <laughs> Yeah. relationship it's so weird like <laughs> the give and take from both of us is just oh that's cool i've never had that with anybody else ever yeah what that's the hell super cool yeah we're 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 like bonded and we're both hoosiers <laughs> you, we oh i'm so glad you brought this up because when when you and i had a drink uh at the one female audition this came up a, a lot of people were talking about this chicago scene and realistically i, I it's funny how people will mention like oh indiana or chicago <laughs> realistically most of the people that i've met here aren't even from chicago no. they're from some burb right. anyway but there's always I know. a I always joke get about so much indiana. slack about indiana, uh, from indiana from the people in maggie speaks but i'm the only one that was born and raised in chicago yeah i would <laughs> <laughs> i would i, I would say, oh that's right yes. oh my god i'm yeah. like you're from england you're from northbrook you're from Wisconsin, you're from I think Michigan. It, I, I think Tyson was talking about uh, one of the players. Tyson's another. Tyson's been mentioned on this podcast so often, just oh, randomly Tyson. for some reason. My favorite ginger. But I think <laughs> I think he said something <laughs> along the lines of like, "Oh, this one guitarist. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just an Indiana thing." And in my mind, I'm like, "You were born in Connecticut. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? Like it's a it's just a mentality thing. But yeah. so much talent." Is working its way even into our company from Northwest Indiana, and it was Sean was There's asking like me about it, and somebody else. Yeah, uh, Sean was asking me. Oh, I think that's when we were having a drink. Yeah, He's yeah. like, "What's this Indiana thing?" And I, I mean, I know the answer. I mean, for for me anyway, because my dad did the, the similar thing as your dad. You know, kind of palling around with the Jackson yeah. Five a little bit. And yeah. those, when the Jackson Five hit, and this is what I guess everybody should, you guys should realize this. This is crazy. But when the Jackson Five hit, they came out of Gary. Well, there was there was talent everywhere, but the talent around East Chicago and Gary, Indiana, which is right outside the city, yeah. um, they wo- woke up because yeah. oh my God, one of these they just hit it. They're right. on Motown, they're on the Ed Sullivan Show or whatever they were on, yeah. and I think it caused anybody who was really good to take that model and work at it. So around you know, my dad's group became this huge group. You know, and got their you know, Atlantic Records. You know, unfortunately didn't sell, but they became the standard. And then they splintered off and became a group known as Together. And there are all these groups. When I was like in the third or fourth grade, I would see these groups in their heyday. And together, still together. They're still together. <laughs> but with, but in their heyday, like I don't know, in the eighties and stuff. I would go see them, and they would have like choreography, costume change. It uh, was such an amazing. But that's what I live for. Yeah, it was explosive. That old school. Uh, like it was, and it, but band. it was tight, and it was huge. And then I, every band that I saw as a kid at some Indiana fest, because they grew up in this Jackson Five culture, they were so good. I don't. I'm. I feel bad that I don't remember the names of the bands that are no longer around, but I would just throw a rock, and I'd see this kick-ass band, and then that in return came to me and then I was in this timepiece group but I mean yeah. this group my, that my dad was in called the Enchanters you know they spawned a, you know there's a group heavy there was a group called um oh I can't remember what War Eagles group was called Mystic Fire yeah they're um, still around timepiece like yeah. they you know it, so it's just we got spoiled you know and then I'd like all to think all those big percussion horn bands oh my god yeah yeah so you and I grew up seeing so many great bands yeah. and not having to come to the city because at the time together right. in some of these groups the city was coming after them you know so it's crazy yeah. you know so I ended, I ended up in a band well and there's from hundreds Indiana. of venues in Indiana that, yeah pay that pay <laughs> that's the other you thing you come to Chicago they're like you know you work for the door well but my following's in Indiana so, yeah yeah and they're paying me you know just straight up just so straight why up, am I yeah. driving to Chicago again but it's funny because it's no different than the person who grew up in Barrington or Schaumburg no. you know but for some reason just because it's the border everyone's like oh Indiana what's the <laughs> oh, it's for weird. sure. They're like, oh, it's like an, another planet, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh, it's closer than Naperville, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know? No, I always tell everyone, I grew up in East Chicago. Like, Chicago's in the title of the town <laughs> I grew up 
up in. Like, I, I could swim to the city from where I grew up. Right. But yeah, man, so there's a lot of talent out there. But I think you and I, again, these parallel paths of yeah. just, it's just, I don't know. I feel, I, I've never felt more bonded to a performer and a person in this world yes. than you. Um, you're, and now you were able to like, all this talk, we didn't even get to your CD. What's your CD called? Let them all know. Ah, oh, Nicole Garza, not Nikki G. Right. I grew up. It's Nicole Garza reinvented. Uh huh. And they can find that anywhere. Literally anywhere. Yeah. iTunes, Spotify. It's out there. If you want a physical copy mailed to you, you can you know go to nicolegarza.com. Yeah. And you know purchase it off of there and get it mailed to you. And if you're a download person, you could download it literally everywhere yeah so or Nicole stream it Garza. on spotify <laughs> there you, yeah, you go. again i'm not cheap <laughs> just listen to the music <laughs> but i have to say it's huh. i don't know if you feel this way what? um i never quite feel like my voice is captured as well on a recording as it is live. you need one more you just you're one cd away from it you think because i love i i love the last cd i do though. too i love i it. do too but there's uh, your. I, I there's just, just some nuances. The only I feel like this are is missing. stupid now. Um, this is this is. I I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I think it's going to take that third one because it took because I didn't feel like I nailed it to my third one, and I feel like we're the same person in so many ways. Because I felt like with the first CD I ever did, I loved it so much, though I'll never release it. Sure. Um, but I didn't have it. It was Studio Robbie. Show Robbie really kicks ass. Isn't that so strange? Yeah, and it's then like... the second CD I wrote, I figured it out a little more. The timepiece CD. I don't know if you ever heard the timepiece CD. No. Um, oh, just a couple songs from it. Okay. Because you would play them on your breaks and whatnot. Yeah, so there, that, that is... you know, and it's weird because then there's some gimmies there too, though. Like I didn't have it perfected. You know, there's a couple flat notes that I wish I could take back yeah. that are on the CD. Sure. But I was learning production. I was working with um, this Ben Odom, who's in the Soulsters. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was working with him in a separate studio project while doing the time. I was working with... Him and the, a guy from Hinge Studios, I learned so much about production while doing the timepiece CD. I had so many tricks up my sleeve for that one. But still, it wasn't until voice prints, because I think it was the, the level of maturity I got to, you know, even more shows under my belt, and then I stopped caring about the dream. Even when you came out with Reinvented, you were still thinking, the dream. I got to yeah. get it out there. Yeah. The next time around, I, I think you're going to, I know... If I, I'm going to crawl into your head and I'm assuming that if you are still me, <laughs> I'm thinking you're, you're thinking, well, of course, I want the music to, to go somewhere. I wanted to do something for me, but yeah. I don't care if it doesn't because I'm, I, I, it's in me. I have to do this. I have to record. I'm right. an artist. I have to do this, yep. you know, but I have a great job, so I'm okay. And I think all those factors yeah. are lined up the, the same way they were for me in voice prints. And I think because of that, one more round is going to right. be the best you've I feel like ever I'm reinvented. Done. I had a I was still trying to prove my point. Yeah. Prove my place. Yeah. And I did. You know, I mean it's You sound great. It's a ridiculous People good buy the album. CD because you're you're, you're you're we're by no here's here's what we're saying. By no means are we putting down this CD. No, what we're it's saying great. is that it's she great. is so remarkably phenomenal. That and this is this is this isn't exactly what her stage show is, but it's so great. It's such a great CD, and and like any artist, every next project should be better than the one before. You know. Yeah. So your and next the musicians one, you know, on the album. It's just ridiculous. No, it's a great it's CD. All live. But I know ah, everything you're saying. Yeah, I went yeah. through. That's and, what I'm saying. And so this all came up, came to me when we were doing, <clears throat> excuse me, again the female auditions mm. in that big room the jim peterick's son i can't remember his name colin is that his name uh i can't remember <laughs> anyways the venue in bolingbrook that we yeah that did the auditions at and you and i did the sound check off ears yeah and all of a sudden they just started playing it back this venue it's a live venue but they multi-track and all of a sudden they just started playing back the well, sound we check that did. we weren't even trying on right. and that my voice the way my voice sounded in those you know, 15 seconds that they let it roll back Yeah, was the voice I want to hear on, on my recordings. Yeah. And so it makes me feel like that's the type of atmosphere I need to be in when I record my next album. Oh, smart. In a live room. Yeah. Because that's what I do. That might be the room, And then if the I need to, you know, punch in, punch out, overdub. Sure. I can, but 
I'm not in this dark, you know, not that it's stuffy because the Rax Tracks is where I recorded my album. It's not stuffy at all, but like, you know, the live room is a live room and then the vocal booth is the vocal booth. I kind of feel like I need to be able to interact and let it bleed over. And I don't care if my vocal track is super I think, clean I, I think and maybe just be, release I think that's album. awesome. I think you should definitely do that. But I also think that the next time you're in a booth, it's going to be different hmm. just because it's going to be your third time in. There's too, there's too much. The other thing on people like us is there's too much on our shoulders that normal people don't have to deal with, yeah. you know, to get that, the best out of us, you know, and yeah. it, we, there's too much on our mind and there's too, too much happening. We have to think about the production and mm -hmm. think about how much time is going into this because every minute is something is a dime out of our pockets. Well, and, and it's like, okay, I can't blow myself out today in the studio because right. I have to work tomorrow. Yeah. The whole, <laughs> the whole thing. So I think the bride's going to be mad if I don't have a voice. <laughs> I, I think you were lined up for it. I, I was excited. And I actually thought about that when I thought about us doing a duet, I'm like, she's, when we're in a studio together, it's going to fly. She's going to really be happy happy with this like oh. you yeah so uh, no i think i think the life thing is awesome because your live performance is is unparalleled anyway you know but uh there's just some sort of energy i can't seem to replicate it's you need the third cd okay i'm telling you all right i'm saying it right now if everybody watch just watch what happens well that last one was released in 2011 yep see like august of 2011 so that's even so it's better been four years yeah, that's a perfect amount of time so yeah. i think it is too because you have so much, I mean, you already had the gear to do these magical things, but now you've been doing these magical things like over 200 times a year. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing oh, there's... Can, can duplicate and nothing can come close to the experience of your voice. You may not even feel it, but walking back into the booth after four years, four well, more years and, of doing that and much. And you never know when you reach your peak until you're on your way down. Yeah, yeah. And I still... Um, I'm, I still feel like I'm on the oh, way up. Oh, you have game. You have so much. No, I still you, feel like I'm on the way up. So I'm better now yeah. than I was in 2011. You sound better every year, and you sounded awesome when I met you 10 years ago. You know. Thank you. Yeah, you're fine wine, man. <laughs> With just like a little strong vodka drink on the oh, side. Oh yes. You're like a, you're like a fine wine, but with a better kick. I love vodka. Yeah. See, fine wine with a better kick should be like, yes. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot. I, and, and that leads me back to what I was saying. Like, that's why it's good to be you because of like how you live and how you sing, how you are. Me. I think I'm going to call this podcast Be Nicole Garza. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, that's yeah, so funny. I think funny. so because I think I think seriously people should just know and it's it's just you you have the best walking orders. You're you're a great example. You know, you should Thank just Thank you for that. Yeah, if there were a Nicole Garza school uh not you know because your school of thought alone is just If I had valuable, If I had to to prioritize mm -hmm. my personality be a good example is probably number 1. Really? Yeah. I imagine if you had somebody like 20 years older than you on your stage with even more experience than you had, you would still be a nurturing, supportive presence. Like you, you, you just have a nurturing, people are safe. People can feel safe I will around never you. And you're a vocalist that's so good. Out to dry. Yeah. And you're a vocalist that's so good that you don't have to do that. People might not even feel safe approaching a stage with somebody as good as you, but you are so giving up there. You're Thank one you. of the more generous people I've ever met, you know? Thank you. Yeah. In life and up there. I think it's because I've been on shows where I've been the person that has been strung out to dry. Really? Where you don't know our arrangements too bad. I'm like, well, this we didn't have any rehearsals, and I got I'm a sub tonight. Like, yeah. you're gonna look at me. You're gonna help me out. You're gonna, and I've been that person that was made out to look unprepared, oh. and I was unprepared, but not because of something I could control. And instead of the other person helping me yeah. and trying to guide me through, knowing that I'm a pro, I just need a little guidance. I was left hanging to look dumb and feel dumb. Oh, so I will never make somebody feel that way. But not still, not intentionally. That's a tribute to you again. You have a kind heart because you could also, another lesser person would have flipped that and thought, I got screwed, so I'm going to screw the next guy, you know? <laughs> so the fact that you're kind, you know? Oh. Here's, a, here's a vocal question. What was your first, like, when you were like a kid, and it was time to ad lib. What was your first like? All I had in my pocket when I was like a kid. Oh yeah, when I did. Oh yeah, I'm like. Oh yeah, I, I'm outside the box. Mine was whoa, 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 <laughs> and my dad goes, "Are you falling?" 
<laughs> you sound like you're falling. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Why are you saying whoa? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. I've never said whoa ever since then. Oh my God. <laughs> and ever, si- ever since then, when I hear somebody say whoa, whether yeah. it's live, you know, a, you know, a local person or a, a recording artist, I'm like, they are falling. <laughs> oh no, that <laughs> changes everything. My dad said they sound like everything. they're falling. You realize that, yes. uh, I don't know how. <laughs> But possibly in our duet, there's going to be some sort of breakdown. We're both going, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm going to put the words. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm falling. I'm going to actually. Yes. You've inspired in me. In our duet. <laughs> there might to be. my father. Yeah. If the, if the, if the, it's dedicated to my father. Yeah. I just remember that. Because it's funny. Because then you go through like, oh, I want to do this Brian McKnight riff, you know. And then, you know, now later in years, we both have yeah. our tricks. You know? Oh, yeah. There, yeah. there were times where I would you know, back in the day, not even that far back in the day, mm-hmm. you had digital recorders and then you could slow it down. So I would record the ad libs and then slow them down and then learn them At note that pace. by note and then slowly speed them up so yeah. I can nail them in time. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, there's some things where you can't just hear and nail. Right. You have to work at it. Man, I don't, I, I never, I, I would, I would sing them slowly and then work the speed up but i never thought to like listen to them there's this there's this riff at the end of uh christina aguilera's trouble which is the last album that i liked that she released okay the dual disc one was more modern one was old school like 40s so oh right right right. yeah um trouble she sang it through like one of the old Oh, it had that old timey. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got trouble, trouble, trouble. You know, it sounds great. But there's this rift she did at the end, and I recorded it, slowed it down until I mastered it. And then I, I recorded it on my phone and I sent it to my sister. And she's like, You're a badass. <laughs> but she had no idea how much work I'd put in yeah. to, to nail it. It changes everything. But now that riff is in my arsenal because I took the time. To, to work it out, steal yeah. it, and then throw it into my own stuff, you know? And then, dare I say, you, you end up, like, doing your own version of a riff, you know, and it all... Right, you know, it kind of, you just conglomerates, you know, just oh, morphs man. into something this guy, that works. guy, his name was Beto. I think his full name was Lucio Barajas, but they called him Beto, and he grew up with my dad. They knew each other since the first grade, and when I started to watch them perform because they they this reminds me of you it's so weird they were in their 60s band and then when the when the record labels and everything just fell apart didn't work out they went to regular live they didn't sing for like 16 years and then they got back together and when they got back together they were so old school that they're like no the four singers have to get together and we're gonna sing together and as if we're relearning how to harmonize for six months and one of them played guitar okay and then after six months okay we're gonna add a bass for a month get out of here we're gonna add tr- i never seen anything like it and, me neither and when they when they start but with the guy who taught them made them all stay it was there were five of them the fifth guy was like the one who knew how to sing he made them all stand in, co- in four corners of their basement right and give them all the notes ooh, 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 and they'd all sing their harmony note and then they'd all have to step in one step Wow, interesting. And then they kept going until finally they were all in the middle and they'd hit the chord. Blending, yeah. yeah. And and but, well, so anyway, when I was in like eighth grade, I watched these guys build a band from scratch, you know. But I remember once they hit their stride and they were just doing their own thing, they would do a song, and they were just vamp when the song was over. And the ad libs that this guy, who was my first mentor, my dad wasn't my first mentor. My dad was like, "Shut up." <laughs> It wasn't until it was it wasn't until later that he's like, oh wait, oh we, my we could start this other band, and I think Robbie can lead it. Yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly he was like, sure. in. but this guy was the first guy that said, I think you can sing. He was the one who said, well, when the song's over, make it your song. It's your song, you know. It's, and man, he did these beautiful, you know. That's when I thought, oh okay, I think I have this. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. <laughs> but he would do, but which now has become like my thing, and you do it. You do it within a tune, you know? You do it, like, within the song. But uh, it became my, you know, which probably led to my weird making up of lyrics. Oh, you're so good at that. that thing. I, <laughs> that weird thing. I look up to you for that. I wish I had that on-the-spot improv that's, that's a weird, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, I have a good enough ear to mess with a melody and mm-hmm. come up with cool lines and yeah. be on my toes vocally. But you lyrically... <laughs> Right. You don't even know what's going to come out. At least this is this is my take of it. Okay? okay. 
So you're up there and you decide, I'm going to say something silly about that person wearing zebra in the audience. Right. And then all of a sudden, you just start making up these lyrics. <laughs> right. And you don't know what's going to happen until after it happens. And you're like, oh, I just said that. That's hilarious. I don't know where it came from. And that's my take of it. And yeah. I don't know if that's your approach or not. But it's so natural and it's so hilarious. And usually it's it's unfumbling you know usually it's very smooth and i'm like how did he did he write this on the way here i and, how did the he do hardest that? part is getting it to is rhyme is she hired to be here you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're the zebra thing i got right. yeah the yeah. hardest thing is getting it to rhyme i don't know man i the, i uh, a couple of weeks ago man. when we played that unplugged show together yeah or maybe it wasn't then but it was recent you came up with a word and you're like crap i don't know what rhymes with <laughs> It was yeah. orange or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you do it enough to where you know there's going to be some bad ones. So yeah. that's the tricky thing. And I love like grabbing somebody. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this at the final say shows or at the unplugged shows, but sometimes I'll ask someone questions about who they are and where they're from. And then oh, okay. I'll improv a song oh, no, I haven't about seen their job and what they do, you know. And it's been lucky. Nine times out of ten, it's been it works but you know the other part of, sometimes it, it, I, it will bomb and I'll stumble like you know but I just feel but like but everybody's the rush. with you though yeah and everyone's yeah yeah but the rush of they're like, waiting for that moment where it just falls apart and they're just ready to laugh with you, you I don't know? know anything this is it this is a new thrill that I found over the last couple of years and I have never it's it's my heart is pounding I'm so scared because I never know how it's going to come out yeah and then it somehow it's been working I don't know so was I um, accurate you're not quite sure what's going to happen I'm not quite sure what's going to yeah yeah it's a Weird. Okay. It's weird, but I owe so much. You know, I think I t might have even told you this. This is why I have a hard time, uh, like cursing on stage because I was I did the radio thing. And you couldn't curse, right? So even at a bar thing, you know, because I remember it, you and uh, Allison for the uh, forget you, forget you. He's like, what? Just say it. It was just you're my... in a bar. There's nothing prude about you. You told me this, like you know, you're not a prude. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you're it's so funny because the first time I said it, it was just so like, it made me feel so good. It's like, finally. Yeah. Like, there's nothing, no word like the F word, you know? And my mother was in the room one, one night when you and I were doing it at Northwoods. Okay. She's like, I can't believe you did that. And it's like, really? Like, everybody's 21 and over. Every time. It's after midnight. What are you doing here if you're a prude? I wonder if I'm hallucinating <laughs> because every time I'll randomly, I still have never sang the song doing the F word the entire way. And mm. you know me in life. Yeah. I talk like a truck driver. Yeah. yeah. You know, when people hear the podcast, especially some of the early ones where I'm really like, oh, shit, you know? Yeah. I, they, I know people were like, oh, I've never heard him say shit. I go to <laughs> All of his shows, he's never he's said. He's never said a yeah. cuss word. But when I when I sing the CeeLo song, even to this day, the few times I drop the f bomb in it, somehow, some way, my eyes go right to the one sixty year old grandparent couple that's in the room, and in my <laughs> mind, they're like nodding, like, "Oh, you should." I guess have you've done never met my grandparents. Jimmy Fallon does. It. <laughs> 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 They're like, this is like Thanksgiving. Right? Yeah, no, I don't oh, know, man. Oh, God. But I Ask owe, Chad next time about owe, his um, first Thanksgiving with my family. <laughs> really? Yeah? Is it a, It's insane. It, it, that's an amazing... Like, it's is, insane. Is it, is it like just craziness? And Well, it's just, you know, truck drivers. Yeah. Truck driver mouth. I don't yeah. have the language yet, mine, but it is funny when I go to like, you know, I'll go to Janice's family and we sit down at five o'clock and we're all oh, around no, the table. Us. And then you go to mine right after and it's like, I'm throwing the stuff and you better catch it on your yeah, plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, us. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there was one holiday where we were playing like the sing-off, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> it was a TV show. I don't know if it still is, but it's like a... Uh, a karaoke game and you're supposed to face the opposite way and the ball's going and everybody sees what the right lyrics are but if you sing the wrong ones you lose <laughs> and my cousin and I and a couple other of my cousins were playing and my band who lived in Chicago but was formerly from somewhere else who didn't wasn't able to go home for the holidays I invited them over for Christmas uh-huh so they were up in the kitchen hanging out with my mom and me and my cousins were playing this silly game in the family room and something went wrong, but my cousins were like, oh, F you, man. I can't effing believe that effing happened. You're full of shit. You know, you a-hole. You know, uh, you know, I'm bleeping right now yeah. for the sake of my You're poor mother's ears because I know she's going to listen to this. But <clears throat> but the my bandmates looked at my mom like, they're going to throw down. They're going to start grumbling. They're going to beat the crap out of each other. And my mom's like, oh, no, this is this is just how they are. This is every holiday. Oh, weird. <laughs> yes. 
But, you know. I want to ask you something. Going back to, like, um, improving or talking, like, how did you get to that point? Because you, you speak really well in between, you know. I think you're very conversational, and you do that really well in between songs and stuff like that. You're funny. You've actually gotten, you, you were always funny in life. But you, again, you know, typical you, you just, uh, yeah. you're even better at it now when I go to the Unplugged show than before. <laughs> I'm like, this is funny. It's a couple things. Because that last time I saw you, I uh, did see quest. more, I knew more than you thought, or I saw more than you yeah. thought because I kind of was hiding in the back yeah. to experience it. You know? you know, it's a couple things. There was a point in time where I felt completely uncomfortable talking. Mm-hmm between songs to an audience. I'm like, I'm a singer. I sing. That's all I do. Don't take too much time between songs because I don't know what to say. Yeah. And then after that point, it's like, okay, maybe I should script some things because inevitably, I'm going to have to say something. So then I would script things. And then all of a sudden, it was kind of (sighs) like... If they judge me, they judge me. If I stutter, I stutter. If yeah. I, you know, use incorrect grammar, so what? Be conversational and... I've always found it easy to find the most comfortable person in the audience to speak to and start from there. Brilliant. You know, and then once you get everybody else's attention, oh, then that guy's paying attention. So I'm going to talk to you. And it's not scripted anymore. It's not, um, you know, it's not bland. It's in the moment. It becomes a game for the audience too. Like, oh, I want to be a part of this. Right. You know, it's so interesting. And like I told you, all of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, I've been talking for three minutes. (laughs) Maybe we should sing a song because I didn't get hired to be a comedian. I got hired to be a a vocalist. It's interesting that you say scripted because I never broke down how I pull off this improv thing until I think I was talking to you at, at a bar about it. But for the radio thing, I only had a minute or something and I had to sit and write I would think about the jokes. I'd have to write these jokes yeah. and then I would do it. And then it got to the point where I was just looking around or reading the paper on the train ride and I would think, oh man, what? where's the funny? Oh, that's funny. Uh, oh, I won't have to script this, but this is funny. I'm going to somehow turn this into a funny story at the show. So it got a little faster. And then it got to the point where I was, and I remember after doing the radio thing, I did a show at like the Lake County Fair and my group noticed it. Like, you're, this is, this isn't, you were always charming i guess yeah but now there's this thing yeah you're talking and it's funny and you know something was happening it got to a point where i was driving to shows to the band shows not the radio shows oh that's a funny story yeah i'm gonna work that into something today after a song and i kept, i think i kept doing it little by little closer to the show where then it got to the point where i would have a conversation with somebody right before we went on and i would think oh my god what like you what you you like shot a basket and farted really loud and the guy behind like that's funny i'm gonna use that and then it got that quick and then it's i think i kept training the muscle sure. to where now it's gotten to the point where it's instantaneous. It is. So now I see something happen and I process it as a joke and it becomes, you know, and then somehow because maybe I'm a writer or a poet, I was able to translate into the songs. Songs, yeah. So now it's a rhyming. But it's so weird because I, uh, you know, people have asked me about the improv thing a lot and I always thought, I don't know, man, it just flies out. It wasn't until I think I talked to you about it that I realized, well, wait a minute, it did start off. So I guess anybody who wants to make up songs at a gig or <laughs> jokes, it does. It did start off slowly, sure. and then the mind muscle just trained to. Be, now yeah. it's instantaneous. Yeah, it hits my head. It hits yes. my mouth. Yeah. Like you said, faster than I know what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting. I never broke it down before, so you can. You, you it, see, the, and that just shows you, right? You can't just say, "Oh, well, that's just that person." Like, no, things can be learned. You know. Well, and we've had this conversation recently about. Our friend Lauren, who right. came out to oh do my research gosh. and perfect example. Yeah, I feel that way every time. I I don't purposely come out to learn from you. Yeah, but I do feel like every time I go to see you perform, whether it's unplugged, original, or final say, I am learning from you. What? And that's no seriously. And that's the type of shows that I like to go see. It's the people that I can learn from. Even it. now, though. Even that, now. Oh, that's a pleasant surprise. Yes. No. Even now. Oh. Even now. You know, the way you approach the audience, the way you approach a show makes it a very comfortable, entertaining experience. And I think that's, I think that's a lot of what other artists are lacking. You know, when I go see... The personalizing? Personalizing, yes. There's a million great vocalists. There's a million great performers. There's a million that have both 
great performance, great vocals, but there's not a million that can be charismatic, that can be in the moment, that can speak to the audience as if this is the first time you're speaking to them and it's personalized to this experience and you've never said what you've, you're saying right now to anybody else ever. Yeah. And that's how I feel when I come to see you play. Oh, you. Yeah. I feel that same way. I'm a huge Sarah Bareilles fan. I don't know if you're hip to her, but if I you're not, her, you should. I love her, but I've should. never seen her. You need to see her. The interaction stuff. I saw her a whole show with just piano vocal. Really? A whole show at the House of Blues. Okay. And it was ridiculous. And she's just like you. She's silly. She tells stories. She talks about, you know, an intro to the song she's going into, but you don't know she's introducing the song. She's not saying, this next song is about this guy that, you know, she's uh-huh. just telling the silly story. And then all of a sudden she starts telling, you know, s- you could tell singing the song, and you could tell it's like, wow. oh crap, that's she just yeah. told us this, this, this story about the song, <laughs> you know, and you it's just very connected. fluid. Yeah. You feel super connected. I feel like we're best friends. She doesn't know I exist, but she's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well that. But means that's how I feel when I watch so you. I that all right, making me speechless. I'm not the only podcast. person that feels that way. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, you know, I, I would hope that. So then people feel like, well, I got to go to the show because I'll never, you know, though the only thing that it's a once in a lifetime experience every time they go to see you. Well, I appreciate that. The only funny thing is there have been times when I've made up the improv song about somebody and then they come back and they're like, hey, do it again. Well, and that's my point. You can't. And that's awesome though. It can't happen. They'll come back the next week. I brought my boyfriend and I'm a nurse. Remember you did the thing? Right. Like, I don't know what the It's it's not Mad Libs, (laughs) you know, you made it up. Oh, man. Well, moving forward, so we know that you have to hurry up and do another CD. Yes. You have to. People, you have to buy the current one, buy Reinvented, because it's just really good. It just, not only that, I'm going to tell everybody to like, we'll go to, so NicoleGarza.com is where they should go. Yeah. And you, you, you're good. You're better than me. Like, I just recently updated my dates, but I'll go. I put all of my, I'm terrible with pictures on there. Yeah. Um, But if you want to find me on Facebook, I always... Do you do upload. the Instagram thing? I have not come, become hip to you Instagram. Know what? I should. Get into that. I, 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 I'm late to the game as well. But I never not put my dates up. My oh, dates good. are always up. I put them up a month ahead of time because things See, tend to fluctuate. You're so good at so it. So it's like, okay, yeah. December I'll have January's dates up. And January I'll have February's date, dates up. But... um. You know, I need to get better with the the updated pictures. But, whatnot, but that doesn't but. even. I mean, you know, you guys go to her website because she's going to be a more up. I, I, there there are times where I'm like three weeks behind on my dates. I'm like <laughs> crap. You know, go to my Facebook page. I'll talk. Just recently, I tried to do a Nicole Garza, and oh, like I, yes. and I thought of you. I'm like, oh yes. man, because you know, I thought of you because I got your email blast. And every time I get your email blast, it's a combination of like, oh man, it's great. I think I can see her, combined with. Oh my God! Why am I so behind? <laughs> so like I'm happy and depressed yeah, when I get you know, your email blast. Well, You're so you have, good at it. You have a MacBook. I do. I have a MacBook. Yeah. So if I'm you know at home cracking out on Sons of Sons of Anarchy <laughs> like I am this winter, that's I, your jam. Yeah, well, it's my new jam. Okay, okay. You know, so I've just been cracking out on. on oh, I'm Netflix. gonna jump into it. Then. Oh, it's I, good. It's yeah. good stuff. Right. Um, you have to give it a, like five episodes. I saw the Don't pilot quit. and I loved it, but I never got back yeah. in. So. Cool. So, you know, it's cold. There's nothing else to do. So I'll sit there with my laptop and yeah. I'll just update my dates while I'm oh, you're so good at watching. It. So I'm go a multitasker. See, you, they don't, it doesn't, your pictures, that doesn't even matter. Because people, you can go to NicoleGarza.com. You can see all the dates. Pick your date. And then who cares about, the, I mean, she actually has some great looking pictures on there. Yeah, but there's a besides, million pictures on there. But besides there, that. I just need to get better with show pictures. Yeah, like, hey, who, this is from last weekend. Who cares? Let's post just go to the go show. Go see it live. Who cares see, about the yeah, pictures? Yeah, see the moving live picture. <laughs> <laughs> Go up and need to touch her, just like on the shoulder. Don't don't touch her. Yeah, me. it sounds weird, doesn't it? Robbie, Go. take that back. Go to the show. Say, hey, Ask- we've come here to touch Nicole Garza. <laughs> Ask permission first. <laughs> I'll, I'll be very honest. But go go to her show, experience her, because you're going to see everything you would ever want to see as a singer. You're going to see everything you'd want to see as a performer. And I can tell you personally, for anybody that listens to this, you guys have gotten to know me. You hear me talk all the damn time. So if you've listened to this many episodes by now and, and they're lengthy, then you obviously slightly care about what I think. I'm going to tell you, you're not only going to see like one of my favorite singers. I promise you that. No one's going to say that she's not awesome. You're going to go see her and you're going to say, 
Robbie was right. If you're lucky enough to meet her, you're going to also meet one of the best people you can meet in the business. And that's hard to find because I. And we're going to take a shot. And they're going to take a shot, you know? (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Again, cut to like 200 people showing up. We're here. We were told we can touch her and get a free shot. shot. (laughs) Not even in that order. See, (laughs) you told me I was a brilliant marketer. (laughs) Boom. No, see, I mean, there are too many people that I've met and I respect them and I hear them and then I meet them and I'm like, well. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. You're not only you, you, you. This is. I'm giving you a gift by introducing you to Nicole Garza because you will fall in love with her voice, and then you will fall in love with her. So this is your gift from me, NicoleGarza.com. Go listen to her, and then go actually see her in person and just enjoy it. I cannot thank you enough. Oh, for this was this. so much fun. Was it? Fun? Did you have fun? I had fun talking to you and eating cookies. See what I'm saying? You guys want some cookies? <laughs> it was you and me, man. We needed this. So good. I oh. want to have you back. We've been trying to hang stuff. for months, but yes. now we just hung like in front on of, microphone. Yeah, now I'll be in front of like thousands of Heck people. Yeah. So we had our That's hang. the only way to do it. Diva style. Boom. Well, I, I know. I should go like, rob a seat. I, I can't, see, I can't go backward, right? That's going backward. <laughs> you're like, no, no. You should have done that when you were 18, stupid. Like, no, you're robbing Silly. Celeste. Well, anyway, Nicole Garza, find her, love her, and just thank you for thank you for being what you are because oh. I need people like you in my life, artistically and personally. Likewise. To, you know, you make my life a little more complete. I'm glad mm. I know you. So. Likewise. Oh, all right. See that? Now it's, it's here forever. Those were kisses, by the way. <laughs> yum, yum. All right, people. So, Nicole Garza, enjoy. Uh, thanks for listening. Enjoy your month. Enjoy your day. Go out and find your smile. Heck yeah. <laughs> Hello, it's me, the girl you used to be. I need the new you to find the old me. I'm still waiting right here. Oh, I'm waiting to be free. Why can't the new you find the old me? strong through the tears in my eyes lost and lonely you're not who you used to be why can't the new you find the 